Привет всем. Так, одну секунду. Сегодня будем смотреть Google I.O. Посмотрим, что Google нам приготовил. У нас э, на связи Лиз. Э, привет. привет. Привет, Лиз. Как у тебя дела? Ты обычно спрашиваешь, как тебе лихиться. Как лихиться? Лихиться хорошо. Прекрасно. Ну что, я подумал, что по-хорошему надо было начинать типа минут на 30 позже и потом смотреть на большей скорости. Хотя, с другой стороны, наверное, будут люди, которым сложно английский, поэтому давайте так посмотрим. Значит, если что-то непонятно, если нужна помощь с переводом, прям тормозите меня, и я переведу. Ну что, поехали. Отмотаем на начало. Это значит CEO всего Гугла, Сандер. Ну что, давайте посмотрим пока, что, что за интро будет, пока народ собирается. Привет, привет, Арк Сметана. А, скажите, просто видно ли, Алис, тебе, наверное, надо пошарить экран, да? Так. Все, по пошарил таб с Лисом. Включаем. Ну пусть пока народ собирается, скажи, это слышно, меня вот так интересует. Я думаю, это лучше потише немножко сделать. Давайте. Музыку тише, готово. Может, пар пара минут. Вообще, что, что мы ждем от кинота? А, значит, будет два кинота. Первый, я могу еще тише сделать. Первый, значит, будет для всех. Здесь могут быть всякие Google Home новые или такие темы. У меня ноль инсайтов, я специально не смотрел, что будет, чтобы было интереснее смотреть. Вот, поэтому сначала, значит, первые два часа будет рассказывать, что у них нового для обычных людей, ну, во всех продуктах Google. И потом будет для разработчиков через два часа. И там уже будет всякая жесть, скорее всего. А они с, э, предлаг... приглашают всяких э, исполнителей. Но здесь вот, скорее всего, э, есть какие-то... Ну, это как называется, когда они лупы делают. Я думаю, что это тетя. Вот, наверное, это какая-то группа известная. Я не знаю, что они тут делают. Можно проскроить, посмотреть, будет ли там движ какой-то, да? Ну, не очень похоже, да? Что, что лично я ожидаю, я, я вообще без понятия, поэтому мне будет интересно смотреть. Движ Париж, короче. Ну вот пока то же самое. Я, кстати, вот перед этим киноутом решил, решил посмотреть старые киноуты, которые, допустим, 19 -го года были. были. Я, я смотрел еще более старые, но вот я сейчас хочу про 19 год сказать. сказать. Угу. И я посмотрел, посмотрел, блин, там, короче, сидит в зале куча народу, они такие сидят, смотрят вот все это дело, там сцена. Угу. Я вот, вот сейчас, сейчас осознал, осознал, насколько, насколько это устаревший формат. Угу. То, То есть мы все привыкли уже сидеть дома, да, смотреть крутые трансляции. Я вот там в чате приводил пример, как Apple сделали со своими конференциями. Угу. Так, одну секундочку, Лис. Говорят, что эхо, я попробую с другого компа как-то это запустить. Сейчас, секунду. Ага. ага. Так. Да, скорее всего, буду смотреть на другом компе тогда. А эхо кого? Меня? Да, ты у тебя эхо, поэтому я тебя сначала... Так, а как я это смогу? Давайте-ка я попробую прямо вообще отсюда стримить, без всякой фигни. Мне придется на секунду перезапустить стрим, но, скорее всего... Или нет Ладно, давайте с этого так. извиняемся а, так 
сейчас я переключу тогда экран. Хоп. И будет так. Google I.O. Так, Лис, скажи, пожалуйста, что-нибудь, если ты с нами. А, так, Лис, скажи, пожалуйста, что-нибудь. Тест, тест. Ну-ка. Так, я извиняюсь за тысячу повторяющихся картинок. А скажите, пожалуйста, должно быть Лиса слышно лучше? Сейчас мы... Запустим. А как мне сделать потише сразу? Тут к нам залетает Фируз. Привет, Фируз. Пошарю экран. А... Ну что, посмотрим. Linked content inspired by the web. Так. Smart. Отмотаем назад, чтобы мы сначала... Так, ну это, конечно, мы не будем смотреть в тете. Короче, смы смысл понятен. Это не какие-то там анимации, что-то они заморочились. Но народ не очень нравится, да? поэтому пропустим. Конец. Так, к нам залетает Дима. Please remember to fill out your evaluation form and leave it at the collection bin in the back of the room. Yeah, that's a big help for people to figure out just how bad our talk was. Yes, we do have a limited supply of CDs. It's great to be here. I'm going to be talking to you today about HTML5. Nothing brings joy to my heart more than robotic androids dancing and singing. Five, four, three, two, Good morning. This is Google I.O. I am thrilled to be here. At the Shoreline Amphitheater. This is the coolest thing. Excited about the future and what's coming. You can build with the community. We want to give you the tools to create entirely new technological capabilities. This is the tattoo. Good, right? And there's always endless discoveries. It's great to have a platform. Да, вот иллюстрация к тому, что говорил Лис. Можно посмотреть у них прямо рядом с кампусом. Они снимают гигантский амфитеатр, это называется. И там типа 5-10 тысяч человек влезает, я не знаю. И вокруг него они ставят целый огромный комплекс, где есть разные всякие интересные штуки, ну, раньше ставили, вот, и можно все это посмотреть. А сейчас говорят, что они сделали то же самое виртуально. Мы можем потом глянуть и посмотреть, насколько будет похоже, будет интересно. Так, ну что, давайте посмотрим. Вот они пока включают какой-то жизнерадостный ролик, показывают про Айо в целом, да? Алис, ты хотел что-то? Я тебя просто прервал на середине. Ты хочешь закончить мысль? Да, я хотел закончить Давай. мысль быстренько. В общем, я надеюсь, то, что они а, перейдут на такой новый формат, такой более живой, да, как сделали Apple. Вот, это вот то, что я ожидаю. Так, у нас пришел ушел кто-то. Я пока я запущу и попробую выяснить, как мне подключить другой монитор, чтобы я смог не переключаться между табами. Пока так. Forum, you can get to new outcomes. Things previously thought to be impossible. Finally, I'm here. Main fact, be possible. I hope you all find some inspiration and to keep building for everyone. Круто, это как раз офис, ну, скорее всего, в Mountain View. Вот, и они, видимо, собрали всех выступающих, чтобы было хоть какой-то эффект лайва. И вот приходит сейчас Сандер, начнет что-то рассказывать. Как 
Good morning, everyone. It's great to be back at I.O. We are coming to you live from our campus here in Mountain View. Of course, it's not quite the same without our developer community sitting here in person. It's another reminder of the times we are living in. The pandemic has brought us together in a shared experience for more than a year. But now, we are seeing that common experience diverge. In some places, pe people are beginning to live their lives again as cases decline. Other places like Brazil and my home country of India are going through their most difficult moments yet. We are thinking of you and hoping for better days ahead. COVID-19 has deeply affected every community. It's also inspired coordination between public and private sectors and across international borders. At Google, we launched products and initiatives to help one another through this time, to help students and teachers continue their learning from anywhere, to help small businesses adapt and grow, and to get emergency relief and vaccines to communities in need. We work closely with many nonprofit organizations around the globe, and you can go to the link behind me to support their excellent work. At Google, the most fundamental way we help is by providing access to high-quality information. Authoritative information from 170 public health organizations around the world, including the CDC, the FDA, and the WHO. We're also focused on helping people find accurate information about vaccines, including the hours and locations for vaccine sites in many countries on Google Maps and Search. Ну, кстати, я использовал, я так понимаю, что очень много будет как раз про COVID сегодня. Я пробовал использовать этот COVID вакцин, и, ну, не, по крайней мере, в, в Нью-Йорке у них не очень получилось. Вот, вернее, они отправили меня на какой-то сайт, а, и в этом они молодцы, но как бы сам сайт был сделан не очень хорошо, не очень удобно. Хотя это, конечно, не проблема Google, а, но мне кажется, что они могли бы разрудить каким-то образом как-то автоматизировать эти вакцины, но это все-таки вопрос не Google, конечно. Дарк Сметана спрашивает всего Google Индус. Ну, Индус — это религия, индиец, да, из Индии, он сказал. Ну, получается так, да. Привет, Дэн. Да, устроились они хорошо. Да, я был в Mountain View. Я был даже на I.O. по-моему, два или три раза, вот, ну, лично. Вот, был, был классно. Нет, не выступал. Ну, кстати, наверное, можно было бы заморачиваться, но пока не добрался. Ну да, типа индуизм — это религия. Вот, поэтому не, не все индийцы — индусы. Хотя в программировании есть такой мем, не мем, но как бы людей, людей с Индии называют все равно индусами, но это чисто такой прикол. И, вот. И, ну, индус — это... Ну, можно будет погуглить потом, чтобы сейчас не сбиваться. Вот, кто хочет, может uh, загуглить. COVID-related information has been viewed hundreds of billions of times across our products and platforms. It continues to help people make decisions and keep their families safe. I.O. has always been a celebration of technology and its ability to improve lives. And I remain optimistic that technology can help us address the challenges we face together. So in that spirit, Let's get started. At Google, the past year has given renewed purpose to our mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. We continue to approach that mission with a singular goal, building a more helpful Google for everyone. That means being helpful in moments that matter. And it means giving you the tools to increase your knowledge, success, health, and happiness. Sometimes it's about helping in little moments that add up to big changes. Recently, we added 150,000 kilometers of bike lanes in Google Maps. We're also introducing two new features. First, new eco-friendly routes. Using our understanding of road and traffic conditions, Google Maps will soon give you the, give you the option to take the most fuel-efficient route. At scale, This has potential to significantly reduce car emissions and fuel consumption. Second, safer routing. Powered by AI, maps can identify road, weather, and traffic conditions where you're likely to have to suddenly brake. 
we aim to reduce up to 100 million of these events every year. Ну, пока интересно, да. Ну, интересно, что не очень понятно эти велодорожки, где они их добавили, скорее всего, где-то там вокруг Калифорнии. Ну, я так понимаю то, что <coughs> начало конференции будет рассказываться о том, то, что, что полезного они сделали для борьбы с ковидом, а уже потом к каким-то техническим штучкам перейдем. Да, ну как первые два часа вообще не должны быть технические, я так понимаю, что они для обычных людей, не, не программистов. Да, для Диман как раз. Мы просили Сандера, что... Вот. Ага. Приверженник индуизма. Индусы называют пищей только плоды и овощи. Ну, короче, кто хочет, может прочитать. Ну да, вот типа это жаргон, что так называют программистов низкой квалификации. Я не думаю, что это относится к Сандеру. Я думаю, что у него все в порядке с квалификацией. А, ну да, вот они сейчас рассказывают про фичи Maps. Конечно, очень большая тема. И, кстати, Дима тоже недавно говорил про это. Про, ну, типа, природа, про всякие это глобальное потепление. И да, как со- сделать со- так, чтобы... Mm? Да, sustainability. Со- mm-hmm. Вот, и вот они как раз говорят, что они... Даже когда ты просто едешь куда-то на машине, они считают так, что ты ехал больше с горки и, и потратил меньше топлива. Я не знаю, насколько обоснована такая экономия на спичках, но, может быть, если применить это к миллионам автомобилей, может, это что-то и сэкономит, да? Ну, это вот. круто, конечно. Ну, это, это круто, что они могут это делать. Вот. Да. В этом плане это очень интересно. И также они говорят, что про безопасность тоже какая-то история. Они как-то определяют, где безопаснее поехать. Ну, здорово. А безопаснее с какой точки зрения? Тоже а... с стороны sustainability или с... Нет, вот я так понимаю, что если какие-то аварии там, да, или что-то, что еще. Или может быть, например, зима, и где там все обледенело, они как-то могут это узнать. Мне было бы интересно посмотреть, как они именно это выясняют, где опасно, да. а где нет. Слушай, сейчас еще один момент я вставлю, mm-hmm. я чувствую, что ты хочешь перейти дальше, но просто это тоже yeah. интересный момент. Вот, например, да, история с движением в горку имеет место, то есть одно дело, ты едешь там из пункта А в пункт Б, и то вверх, то вниз, то вверх, то вниз, mm-hmm. и топливо тратится больше, но с другой стороны... Если обратно, а... да? Нет, нет, не в этом дело, а с другой mm-hmm. стороны, может быть, если ты поедешь там други... вот как раз-таки таким маршрутом сложным, да, когда ты то вверх, то вниз, и тратишь вроде бы больше топлива, но зато mm-hmm. там свободнее. Потому mm-hmm. что, находясь в пробке, ну, там, например, по маршруту более оптимальному с точки зрения перепада высот, mm-hmm. ты в пробке больше выбросишь... Ну, то есть здесь просто подсчет очень такой, знаешь, нетривиальный. То есть здесь mm-hmm. нужно учитывать очень много разных факторов, и это, конечно, вот такая бигдата задача для Гугла. Ну, в принципе, да, но это тоже важно учитывать, что чисто технически у них есть данные из твоего телефона, и они могут посмотреть, типа, где ты тормозил, где ты останавливался, и как-то на основе этого тоже вычислить какие-то вещи. Вот, поэтому, да, это, конечно, задача нетривиальная не, не и интересная. Я еще предлагаю а... не ставить видео на паузу, а просто делать звук потише да. и обсуждать. Да. А, а то мы так будем часов шесть смотреть. Так. 150 миллион студентов и educators keep learning over the last year with Google Classroom or keeping students connected with affordable laptops. Chromebooks are now the number one device globally in K-12 education. Yeah, недавно узнал, in Japan, 40% of local governments chose to deploy Chromebooks to every child in grades 1 through 9. And here in California, we worked with the Department of Education to provide thousands of Chromebooks to students in need. One of the biggest ways we can build a more helpful Google for everyone is by reimagining the future of work. We have seen work transform in unprecedented ways, and it is no longer just a place. Over the last year, offices and co-workers have been replaced by kitchen countertops and pets. With so many people now working from home, access to collaboration tools has never been more critical. In 2006, we introduced Docs and Sheets to help people to collaborate in real time. Year later, we added Google Slides. All of this is now part of Google Workspace, which builds on more than 15 years of creating ways to work together. Today, we are announcing a new experience in Google Workspace to enable 
richer collaboration. We call this Smart Canvas. And to tell you more, here is Javier. Вот, кстати, самое забавное, то, что я вот смотрел э, недавно какой-то киноут, они там тоже Waves, по-моему, представили, говорят, то, что все это революция, и вот да. было примерно так же. <laughs> вот, сейчас я про Waves вообще ничего не слышу. Да, ну, я сделаю, я пред предположу, у меня есть такая теория, что, ну, вот они сделали в Google Docs в, когда в 2006 году, вот, и там основная фишка, что ты берешь обычные доки, как то, что делает Microsoft, да, там Sheets, Excel, Google Docs, как он называется, Word, да, и переносишь это онлайн и добавляешь коллаборацию пользователей. И это очень круто выстрелило, это очень круто работало, но в какой-то момент появилась новая волна э, по подобных инструментов, типа Notion, например, которые позволяют это все объединить, да, то есть что если ты хочешь э, документ, а внутри таблицы, да, то есть не так, э, ну, таблица, которая что-то еще вычислялась бы. И Google Docs, конечно, такое пока не позволяет, вот, и когда появился этот Notion и подобные инструменты, чуваки в Google Docs очень сильно зашевелились, вот, и я думаю, что наконец-то, и делают, делаю этому уже несколько лет, наконец-то они решили ответить на это дело, но, может быть, я не прав, может, это вообще какая-то другая тема, вот, сейчас посмотрим, но, в принципе, я не думаю, что какая-нибудь... Какая-нибудь э, компания будет э, представлять новый продукт, говорит, ну это ну, такая типа как бы тема, но ну, должно быть норм, может выстрелить, может нет. Конечно, они будут говорить, что это, о, это прорыв, это бомба, там сейчас всех разорвет. А, потому что, ну как, как, как иначе, да? Ну что, смотрим, давайте узнаем, что там, мне интересно. Привет, Ер. Thanks, Sundar, and good morning, everybody. With Smart Canvas, we're bringing together the content and connections that transform collaboration into a richer, better experience. For over a decade, we've been pushing documents away from being just digital pieces of paper and toward collaborative linked content inspired by the web. Smart Canvas is our next big step. Let's see how a distributed team uses Smart Canvas to plan an important marketing campaign. The launch date is just two months away, so Wadu starts a document and quickly adds a brainstorm table. With app mentions, he pulls in the right people and generates a checklist to assign action items. These simple actions connect the team's plan to people, dates, and tasks, making their collaboration richer and more effective as they drive toward their launch. Now that he's shared the document, everyone starts dropping in their ideas. As they continue to brainstorm, the assisted writing feature suggests that they change the word chairman to chairperson in the document to avoid a gendered term. New assisted writing capabilities in Google Workspace offer suggestions so you can communicate more effectively. Not only are we helping with language suggestions, we're also making it easy to bring the voices and faces of your team directly into the collaboration experience to help them share ideas and solve problems together. Up to now, Adu and his team have been collaborating in the dock and scheduling separate Google Meet calls to review their progress. But starting today, you can easily present the doc, sheet, or slide you're working on directly into a Google Meet call. Now Adu can join his colleagues with just one click. And this fall, we're excited to bring Meet directly into docs, sheets, and slides for the first time. This will enable teams like Adu's to actually see and hear each other while they're collaborating. Now, they'll never skip a beat. And to keep that collaboration flowing in the meeting, the team used the new responsive voting table to see which ideas for the campaign are the most popular ones. With all the progress they've made together, Adu's initial document has evolved into a highly interactive, always up-to-date, actionable plan. And the team stayed connected every step of the way. That's the power of Smart Canvas. Two months later, it's time to launch the new campaign. Adu and his team are joining from offices, from home, and everywhere in between, connecting across time zones and continents. 
to help both office and remote teammates remain an equal part of the conversation, no matter where they are, we're launching Companion Mode in Google Meet. Companion Mode gives each of Adu's teammates in the office their own video tile so they can stay connected to their remote colleagues and everyone can participate in polls, chat, and Q&A in real time. Companion Mode is coming to Google Meet later this year. Teammates can also be heard wherever they work with noise cancellation powered by the best of Google's AI and machine learning in Google Meet to automatically adjust camera zoom and lighting, ensuring that everyone can be seen across all environments. We've also made it easier to customize views and share content so teams can focus on what matters most in the moment. This means that when Adu presents to the rest of his team, he can easily arrange people's faces to gauge their reactions while staying focused on his content. And his colleagues across the globe can follow along with live captions, even translations, into their native languages. When Adu finishes his presentation, he doesn't feel separated by time zones or languages or the devices his team is using. Instead, with Google Meet's immersive experience, he feels connected and in the moment. With Smart Canvas and these powerful enhancements to Google Meet, we're transforming collaboration in Google Workspace to help people succeed at work, at home, and in the classroom. Previously, the fully integrated experience in Google Workspace was available only to our customers, but it will soon be available to everyone, from college students to small businesses to friends and neighbors wanting to stay connected and get more done together. Stay tuned for more details in the coming weeks. And now, I'll hand it back to Sundar. Ну, вообще, в целом, мне вот как раз напомнил вот эти вот ноушены, то, что там можно тоже делать всякие списочки, ставить галочки и так далее. Делать списочки, ставить галочки. А, ну смотри, ну что, что мы видим? Во-первых, это действительно как ноушен, да? То есть они добавляют какие-то новые типы контента в Google Doc. Вместо mm -hmm. того, чтобы ограничивать себя вот Doc, вот Excel, они создают какой-то общий экспириенс, вот как ЕР написал, что я вижу, что инновации это сейчас это попытки миксовать идеи. Ну, там это напрашивалось, да, потому что непонятно, были какие-то два, были отдельно Docs, отдельно Sheets, и, и логично было бы, чтобы их можно было как-то дружить. А, то, что они могут делать, что не может Notion, это как раз добавить туда Google Meet. Ну, наверное, Notion mm -hmm. тоже мог бы, да? Вот, Дэн думает, что... Ну, вот была недавняя история, что Google Docs перевели, ну, или хотят перевести на Canvas. А Дэн думает, что это для того, чтобы шарить МИЦ, я не думаю. Хотя, может быть, кстати, это интересный вопрос. А я, мне кажется, это еще не готово. Вот, но в целом, пока мне, мне нравится то, что я вижу. Они улучшили также Google Meets, добавили туда всякие голосовалки, Uh, умный noise canceling. Кстати, мне бы на стриме тоже не помешало, потому что у меня шуршит там. Uh, ну, я думаю, что это шаг вперед. Единственное, я не понимаю, что из этого называется Smart Canvas, или как, что это вообще? Ну, я так понимаю, это вот то, что мы видели, да, то, что можно делать списочки, писать текст, делать таблички, вот это вот все Smart Canvas. Это надстройка над Google Docs? Потому что мне показалось, что он прямо, прямо в Google, Google Docs это добавлял все. Вот, поэтому... Ну ладно, я думаю, что время покажет, его, может, еще и переименуют. <laughs> да, была, была статья. Мы мини-курка смотрим Google I.O. Это конференция от Google для разработчиков. Ну ладно, поехали дальше. В целом, в целом круто. Я, я с удовольствием этим попользуюсь, когда она появится. Thanks, Javier. Those were exciting examples of how computer science and AI can make us more helpful across our products. Google Search was built on the insight that understanding links between web pages leads to dramatically better search results. We've made remarkable advances over the past 22 years, and search helps billions of people. And to improve search even further, we need to deepen our understanding of language and context. To do this requires advances in the most challenging areas of AI. 
And I want to talk about a few today, starting with translation. We learn and understand knowledge best in our native languages. So 15 years ago, we set out to translate the web, an incredibly ambitious goal at the time. Today, hundreds of millions of people use Google Translate each month across more than 100 languages. Last month alone, we translated more than 20 billion web pages in Chrome. With Google Assistant's interpreter mode, you can have a conversation with someone speaking a foreign language. And usage is up four times from just a year ago. While there is still work to do, we are getting closer to having a universal translator in your pocket. At the same time, advances in machine learning have led to tremendous breakthroughs in image recognition. In 2014, we first trained a production system to automatically label images, a step change in computers' understanding of visual information. And it allowed us to imagine and launch Google Photos. Today, we can surface and share a memory, reminding you of some of the best moments in your life. Last month alone, more than 2 billion memories were viewed. Image recognition also means you can use Google Lens to take a photo of a math problem. Wish I had this when I was in school. No, it's crude, it's it, then. Lens is used more than 3 billion times each month. We can now be as helpful with images as we are with text. Machine learning has also improved how computers comprehend and communicate with human voices. As Javier shared, that's why we can caption conversations in Google Meet, and why live caption on Android can automatically caption anything running on your smartphone locally. It generates 250,000 hours of captioning every day. Bre breakthrough technology from DeepMind called WaveNet increased the quality of computer-generated speech, leading to more natural and fluid interactions. WaveNet allowed us to create and deploy 51 voices across Google Assistant. Together, the advances in AI I just spoke about across translation, images, and voice improved the search experience for billions of people. They also enabled us to make a huge leap forward in how computers process natural language. In 2017, we first introduced the world to transformers a novel machine learning approach for better natural language understanding. Transformers became the foundation for many other breakthroughs, like AlphaFold and BERT, which we introduced in 2019. BERT considers the full context of a word by looking at the words that come before and after, leading to one of our most significant quality improvements across Google Search and enabling us to respond to queries with more helpful answers. In this case, realizing that the question was about parking on a hill without a curb. We have revolutionized the ability of computers to understand natural language. Yet, despite the incredible power of computers, there are still moments like this. Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> this is because language is endlessly complex. We use it to tell stories, crack jokes, and share ideas. We continuously pull from concepts we have learned over the course of our lives. The richness and flexibility of language make it one of humanity's greatest tools and one of computer science's greatest challenges. If someone asks me if the temperature in the room is OK, and I say I'm freezing, they know that I'm very cold, not literally freezing. Or if someone says, what's the weather like today? I don't respond. It's 70 degrees, sunny, and a 12% chance of rain. I'd probably say, it's starting to feel like summer. I might eat lunch outside. Sensible, sensible responses keep conversations going and allow them to end up in a completely different place from where they started. Even if I began by talking about the weather, we may end up talking about football. Today, I'm excited to share our latest breakthrough in natural language understanding, Lambda. 
It's a language model for dialogue applications. And it's open domain, which means it's designed to converse on any topic. And while it's still in research and development, we've been using it internally to explore novel interactions. For example, say you wanted to learn about one of my favorite pl planets, Pluto. Lambda already understands quite a lot about Pluto and millions of other topics. Let's listen to a conversation the team had with Pluto a few days ago. I'm so curious about you. I sense your excitement. Ask me anything. Tell me what I would see if I visited. You would get to see a massive canyon, some frozen icebergs, geysers, and some craters. It sounds beautiful. I assure you it is worth the trip. However, you need to bring your coat, because it gets really cold. I'll keep that in mind. Hey, I was wondering, have you ever had any visitors? Yes, I have had some. The most notable was New Horizons, the spacecraft that visited me. That must have been exciting. The team that created New Horizons was very excited to see me. I also sent them back a picture of myself since I had not been seen up close before. That's so great. What else do you wish people knew about you? I wish people knew that I am not just a random ice ball. I am actually a beautiful planet. Well, I think you're beautiful. I am glad to hear that. I don't get the recognition I deserve. Sometimes people refer to me as just a dwarf planet. Don't let it bother you. You're amazing. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate it. Thanks for talking with me. No, Anytime, I am always open for people to chat. No. I hope you have a great day. Ну, вообще, на самом деле, синтез речи он ну, достаточно прикольно звучит, но если внимательно послушать, то у него одна интонация. То есть у него нету там ни радости, ни грусти, ни еще что-то. Просто вот одна интонация, да? А все остальное сделано достаточно прикольно. Лучше, чем раньше. Ну, я две вещи хотел отметить. Во-первых, вот эти классные штуки, которые они показывали, Google Lens и генерация капшенов на лету. Кто об этом знал? Мне просто интересно в чате напишите, если вы знали. В Google Meet? Да. А, я... В телефоне. Или что ты можешь сфоткать уравнение, например? Смотри, то, что сфоткать уравнение, я не знал. Но я знал то, что можно, ну, текст отфоткать, там, перевести его. А, ты знал об этом? Потому что я, я знал, например, один раз я видел какой-то странный музыкальный инструмент, и я сфоткал, использовал Google Lens, и она ага. действительно сказала, что, ну, не гитара, а именно какой-то, не помню даже название. А, у меня, короче, дракон использовал вот эту Google Lens, да? Ты же Google Lens использовала? Ну, вроде их, и она, короче, фоткала там растение какое-нибудь, да, и она прям показывала, это вот такое вот растение. Угу. Я такая, да, действительно, это такое растение. Надо на, на птицах будет попробовать. Ну, мне, мне кажется, что очень многие люди просто не знают об этом, особенно не разработчики. То есть оно где-то запрятано далеко-далеко. Нельзя просто, знаешь, фоткал, нажал там какую-то кнопку. Ну, скорее всего, да. Да. А Дима спрашивает, не решили ли Adobe проблемы перевода фото скана в печатный текст? Да, это много кто решил. А, По-моему, ты имеешь в виду вот это ABBYY для русского языка из компании. А, но это не очень удобно. То есть, например, если тебе завтра скажут, э, переведи вот в эти страницы текста, переведи это в текст. Я, например, даже не знаю, куда я пойду. Я не знаю, сможет ли Google Lens мне перевести страницу текста в электронный формат. Короче, по-моему, ты можешь взять фотку, вставить в Google Translate, и оно тебе то ли текстом, то ли переведет. Я вот сейчас не вспомню, это надо смотреть. Я знаю, что можно навести, и оно тебе, да, переведет в Google Translate прямо на лету. То есть ты можешь сфоткать название ресторана на, на улице, и он тебе переведет, как он называется. А, на Кроватрейдер, да. А... И, по-моему, оно прямо еще в текст переводит. И... Вот я не уверен, что можно получить текст из этого каким-то простым способом. То есть очевидно, что технологии есть, но вот они, мне кажется, могли бы лучше продвигать эти свои темы, чтобы все знали о них. Знаешь, как было бы здорово? Вот заходишь на стартовую страницу Google, и он тебе говорит, а вы знали то, что есть вот такая штука? Слушай, они же делают так. Делают? Есть, я, например, да, когда открываю новый этап, они иногда пишут. Они, единственное, очень мало что так продвигают. Вот, поэтому... Ага, получить Слушай, можно, но так... он не будет круто размечен. А что, говорим? 
Я же понял, что я могу ртом сказать, а не в чате писать. В общем, у нас буквально недавно был кейс на работе. У нас был договор, который у нас был в скане, но типа его не было в Варде. И мы его распечатали со скана и восстановили типа в Word. Но, безусловно, там были ошибки какие-то, мы его там отредактировали, но это был самый простой способ, понимаешь? То есть у нас был скан какого-то договора там бородатого года. Uh-huh. Скан э, расп... ну, подписанного. Вот. И мы его распечатали и с помощью Adobe Acro... ну, Acrobat Reader восстановили. То есть uh-huh. это, эта задача решена давно, но мне кажется, что вот именно задача так... такая, что ты фоткаешь название ресторана или меню, uh-huh. и он тебе автоматически переводит. Вот это... Ну, ну, смотри, то, что ты говоришь, не... это ты что-то сосканировал, там перевел в текст на компьютере. Да, да, да. То, что сфоткать меню, я это, этим пользовался уже несколько лет. Как? Это тоже тема совсем не новая. Вот. А вопрос а в том, тогда? что можно ли взять, например, бумажку, сфоткать телефоном, и он тебе переведет это в нормальный текст. Вот такого я пока не видел. Так ты же про меню только что рассказывал, это разве не Нет, нет, сгенерируйте этот документ с нормальным текстом. То, что я говорил, он переведет тебе меню на другой язык. Mm-hmm. Вот. Ну, просто мне кажется, что после проблемы распознания текста уже там его какое-то финальное форматирование в документ ли... Слушай, в... Ну, там, есть что-то... разница между тем, что ты сосканировал документ в огромном разрешении и сфоткал трясущийся рукой на телефон. Да, так не, я же не, спо... я не спорю да. с тем, что это разная задача. Я просто к тому, что раз ты сам говоришь, что проблема меню была уже решена несколько лет назад, то что добавилось mm-hmm. сейчас? То есть именно фотка там э, вывески. Пока я говорю, что просто Google мало это продвигает. А, там, понял. Мы понял. Просто так. об этом мало кто знает. Ага. Да, и вот этот робот, который э, может говорить на разные темы, я не знаю, в чем профит этого. Э, была история, что, по-моему, Microsoft, что ли, или какая-то очень большая компания сделала такого робота, и он э, тренировался, по-моему, то ли на Твиттере, то ли на каком-то... На, на, на твиттере. Вот, да, и, короче, он начал, начал постить все российские шутки через какое-то время, и робота закрыли. И я пока не видел таких успешных успешных тем. Ну, будет, если Google сможет это дело победить, потому что, ну, как бы все хотят робота, который сможет говорить на свободные темы, но пока, ну, не было хороших примеров, поэтому будет интересно. Либо это будет просто очередная штука, которую все поугарают и попостят мимасы, как смешно она отвечает, а потом она пропадет. Либо, может, это действительно перейдет какую-то крутую штуку. Ну, как этот Black Mirror, по-моему, был же эпизод, где там люди влюбляются да. в роботов. Вот, может, мы к этому и идут. Ну и, наверное, конечная цель, да, улучшить Google Ассистента. Я, тоже, я думаю, тоже так, как Дэн говорит. Слушай, я заметил такую, знаешь, интересную конструкцию в твоем предложении. Ты говоришь, было бы здорово, чтобы он общался на свободные темы, но когда он начал шутить российские шуточки, его сразу прикрыли. Ну, без расизма, скажем так. То есть уже не на такие не такие уж и свободные темы, все-таки список тем ограничен. Не, ну можно общаться на все темы по-разному. Ладно, поехали дальше. I spent some time with my son conversing with Pluto, and it's magical. We had a lot of fun learning about space together. Let's break down what made it feel so natural. First, learn concepts. As he saw, the model talked about the New Horizon spacecraft and the coldness of space. Lambda synthesized these concepts from its training data. These concepts were not hand-programmed in the model. Because none of the responses were predefined, Lambda answered with sensible responses, keeping the dialogue open-ended. Natural conversations are generative, and they never take the same path twice. And Lambda is able to carry a conversation no matter what we talk about. You can have another conversation without retraining the model. Let's see what happened when we talked to a paper airplane. What's it like being thrown through the air? It's quite the experience, actually. The wind blowing against you and the trees flying past are quite the sight. You never know where you'll land either. What's the worst place you've ever landed? That would have to be in a puddle. I was just barely still intact, so I was stuck there for a few minutes. It was quite annoying. Oh, that sounds awful. Were you able to fly again? Thankfully, I was. 
I had a few minor injuries to my wing, but you can't really tell unless you know what to look for. What's the secret to a really good paper airplane? Well, my good friend, I must first ask you to specify what you mean by good. Some may think it's how far it goes, some may think it's how straight it goes, and some may think it's how flat it lands. So what do you think? I care the most about distance. Then I would have to say a nice wide wing span is what you'll want. Also, the paper needs to be really firm. What's the farthest you've ever flown? I've flown over about 1,500 feet. The wind was perfect that day. Interesting. Wow, that's really that far. That must have been quite a throw. It was. I was actually thrown from a hot air balloon, believe it or not. Yeah. That's so cool. What did the world look like from out there? It's actually a lot different than it looks from the ground. The world is so large with its vast oceans and mountains. It really puts things into perspective. Yeah, it's important to keep perspective. Hey, I'm wondering, do you have anything you want to share with the people that are watching at home? I do. I just want them to know that if the wind is perfect and you're made of the right materials, you can go absolutely anywhere. People that are watching at home? I do. I just want them to know that if the wind is perfect and you're made of the right materials, you can go absolutely anywhere. Оно, смотри, оно, понимаешь, в чем фишка? То, что когда делают речь более такой приближенной к человеческой и добавляют вот эти вздохи, но ты понимаешь то, что робот говорит без интонации, у тебя начинается немножко диссонанс. Это типа, знаешь, когда кукла вот очень-очень похожа на человека, и тебе от этого страшно. Вот mm -hmm. что-то вроде такого же, мне кажется. Забавно. Ну, я думаю, что там есть 100 разных факторов, которые надо учесть, пока они половину учли, половину еще разберутся, как? Я думаю, что будет лучше и лучше с каждым годом. Слушай, ну этот голос, мне кажется, даже с точки зрения интонации звучит прям на порядок лучше, чем вот э, ну, там, те голоса, которые я слышал до этого, там роб роботизированные, которые что-то читают. Да, я как человек, который прослушал всего Гарри Поттера с помощью программы «Говорилка», когда он говорил «Гарри Поттер пошел гулять», и для меня это прям вообще кайф, то, что он как сейчас это звучит. Вот, поэтому... <laughs> Было бы страшно, если бы эта штука говорила как человек. Да я думаю, что привыкаешь просто. It's really impressive to see how Lambda can carry on a conversation about any topic. It's amazing how sensible and interesting the conversation is. Yet, it's still early research, so it doesn't get everything right. Sometimes, it can give nonsensical responses. Imagining Pluto doing flips, or playing fetch with its favorite ball, the moon. Other times, it just doesn't keep the conversation go going. At Google, we have been researching and developing language models for many years. We have focused on ensuring Lambda meets our incredibly high standards on fairness, accuracy, safety, and privacy. So from concept all the way to design, we are making sure it's developed consistent with our AI principles. We believe Lambda's natural conversation capabilities have the potential to make information and computing radically more accessible and easier to use. We look forward to incorporating better conversational features into products like Google Assistant, Search, and Workspace. We're also exploring how to give capabilities to developers and enterprise customers. Lambda is a huge step forward in natural conversation, but it is still trained only on text. When people communicate with each other, They do it across images, text, audio, and video. So we need to build models that allow people to naturally ask questions across different types of information. These are called multimodal models. Let's yeah. say we want a model to recognize all facets of a road trip. That could mean the words road trip, written or spoken in any language, images, sounds, and videos, and concepts associated with road trips, such as weather and directions. So you can imagine one day planning a road trip and asking Google to find a route with beautiful mountain views. You can also use this to search for something within a video. For example, when you say, show me the part where the lion roars at sunset, 
we will get you to that exact moment in a video. It's brilliant. Ну, кстати, я уже видел такую тему, когда ищешь, типа, как э, настроить какую-то программу, он тебе в Ютубе находит прямо время, и с середины ролика открываешь и смотришь по делу вместо там, о, подпишитесь на мой канал. Еще бывает то, что он прям даже текстом прописывает, то есть прям, ну, говорит, вот посмотрите видеоролик, либо вот текст вам, как это сделать. Uh -huh. Да, вот это очень круто. It's still early days, but later on in the keynote, you'll hear from Prabhakar about the progress we are making towards more natural and intuitive ways of interacting with search. Translation, image recognition, voice recognition, text-to-speech, transformers. All of this work laid the foundation for complex models like Lambda and multimodal. Our compute infrastructure is how we drive and sustain these advances. And tensor processing units are a big part of that. Today, I'm excited to announce our next generation, the TPU V4. These are powered by the V4 chip, which is more than twice as fast as the V3 chip. TPUs are connected together into supercomputers called pods. A single V4 pod contains 4,000... Ну, для не программистов это, короче, как процессоры только для всяких uh, machine learning штучек. 1096 V4 chips. And each pod has 10x the interconnect bandwidth per chip at scale compared to any other networking technology. This makes it possible for a TPU V4 pod to deliver more than 1x a flop. 10 to the 18 power floating point operations per second of computing power. Oh. Think about it this way. If 10 million people were on their laptops right now, then all of those laptops put together would almost match the computing power of one exaflop. This is the fastest system we've ever deployed at Google and a historic milestone for us. Previously, to get an exaflop, you needed to build a custom supercomputer. But we already have many of these deployed today. And we'll soon have dozens of TPU v4 pods in our data centers many of which will be operating at or near 90% carbon-free energy. And our TPU v4 pods will be available to our cloud customers later this year. It's tremendously exciting to see the space of innovation. As we look further into the future, there are types of problems that classical computing will not be able to solve in a reasonable time. Quantum computing represents a fundamental shift because it harnesses the properties of quantum mechanics and gives us the best chance of understanding the natural world. Achieving our quantum milestone was a tremendous accomplishment, but we are still at the very beginning of a multi-year journey. One problem we face today is that our physical qubits are very fragile. Even cosmic rays from outer space can destroy quantum information. To solve more complex problems, our next milestone is to create an error-corrected logical qubit. It's simply a collection of physical qubits stable enough to hold quantum information for a long period of time. We start by reducing the error rate of our physical qubits, then combining a thousand physical qubits to create a single logical qubit, and then scaling that up to a thousand logical qubits, at which point we will have created an error-corrected quantum computer. Today, we are focused on enabling scientists and developers to access beyond classical computational resources. But we hope to one day create an error-corrected quantum computer. And success could mean everything from increasing battery efficiency to creating more sustainable energy, to improve drug discovery, and so much more. The roadmap begins in our new data it's center, Bitcoin, which we are calling the Quantum AI Campus. Let's step inside. Michael, are you there? Hey, Sundar, how's it going? Yeah, I'm here, and I'm excited понимаю, to learn why I'm here. Ну да. Ну, они же, у них недавно было какое-то, типа, большое открытие, они что-то там... Ну, я, я не понял ни, и то, что Сандер говорил, и что они открыли. Вот, но вот они все вместе работают над стабилизацией этого дела. Mm -hmm. Я, так, ну, я в процессе, так понял, то, что Сандер говорит, то, что мы вступаем в эру квантовых компьютеров. Да. Вот, и как там биткоин? Ну, так, ты знаешь этого чувака, Майкл Пенни? Чадвик Блэкфорд говорит, что это зачатки Скайнета. Буквально сегодня читал историю про то, как Вейма, это типа гугловские такси, такси без водителя, она что-то затупила, вот, вызвали инженера, и как только инженер приехал, она, она от него уехала куда-то, короче, он не мог ее догнать. Вот, поэтому, ну, потихоньку, да. А, так, это что, это реально актер или это... Я не, не, не знаю, что это, что это за чувак, сейчас посмотрим. And I'm guessing that's why yeah, he's here. Hey, Michael. Hey. I'm Eric, lead engineer here. I'd like to welcome you to one of the most powerful quantum computing facilities in the world. Oh, thank you, thank you. What's this? Can I touch it? Uh, yeah, that's a quantum processor. 
And inside are these actual physical qubits. Oh, hey, little guy. Qubits are the fundamental building blocks of quantum computers, but they're incredibly fragile. Oh. Even the tiniest particles can disrupt their operation. Right. Which is why we work so hard to create the optimal environment to keep them stable. Right, and I'm guessing the optimal environment doesn't include like Cheeto dust. So I'm just uh, gonna put this no, puppy right back. Thanks. Let me show you where the clean ones go. Cool. So so we built this right. campus to inspire all of our quantum mechanics and to show the world what the future of computing looks like. Good for you, dude. Look at you, dude. Thanks. That's a cool lamp. Uh, it's not a lamp. This is actually a cryostat, and you're looking at the inside of a quantum computer. Wow, cryostat. I love that word, cryostat. I'm guessing people want to know what makes a cryostat a cryostat. Eric? Well, everything you see here, from the wiring to the aluminum, copper, and gold metal stages, have been chosen to create a cold and quiet environment for our quantum processors to operate. Right, right, right. And in English? Uh, it's a fridge for our qubits. Right, right. And how cold are we talking about? Uh, we approach near absolute zero, mm. 10 millikelvin. Блин, мне это знаешь что напомнило? Напомнило всякие видосики типа 80-90-х годов, где показывают то, что вот смотрите, поднимаете телефонную трубку, кладете на устройство, вводите там какой-то номер, подключаетесь к интернету. <laughs> вот, и также нам сейчас рассказывают про квантовые компьютеры. Похоже, почувствуй себя бабушкой. <laughs> да, <laughs> типа того. This place is in the universe. Wow, colder than Canada? Uh, yeah, colder than Canada. <laughs> colder than Canada. Well, it's not just temperature that's important. In fact, we want to remove all distractions from our qubits. Right. Including unwanted electrical and magnetic signals. Yeah, yeah, who wants that, right? Well, let me show you what the final product looks like. Is this a cryostat? Uh, no, that's not a cryostat. What about this? Is this a cryostat? Uh, that's not a cryostat. No? This is a cryostat. Nice. In fact, this is a fully assembled quantum computer. Yeah, so where's the keyboard? Uh, well, there's no keyboard, but it contains everything you've just seen inside and custom control electronics, all of which were designed and built by our team here at Google. Wait, 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 wait. Is this a Bob Ross? Is he on the team? Tell me he's on the team. He's not on the team. Okay. Bob Ross is the guy who was on the TV, who was on the TV, who was on the TV, and he was very calm, 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 very calm. I recommend you to watch on YouTube Bob Ross for relaxation. This is another one. А, а куда здесь вставлять кассеты? Здесь нету, куда можно ставить кассеты, здесь есть диски. Да, да, да. Типа я принес свои перфокарты, куда их ходить. But this mural is our homage to Mother Nature. See, quantum is the language of nature, and we're learning to speak it here. It will enable us to run precise simulations of the natural world, unlocking answers that would otherwise remain unknown. Okay, so let me see if I get this right. Okay, so these qubits are really smart, right? But they're really picky about their work environment. So you got to put them in a lamp, right? But even then, they're like, no, I don't want anybody eating any Cheetos around me. And they're like, I'm sorry, okay, I didn't know, right? So then you've got to wrap them in like this Bob Ross blanket of love, right? And then you keep them there until they can tell us how to think like the Earth. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty close. Okay, you know what this is? This is the power button. I want to well, start it. I, I'm, we're not quite there yet. I'm glad you're on board. Okay. To date, we've reached the first milestone beyond classical computational capabilities. This is us. Yeah, we're here. Everything you've seen here today is what we're using to build to our next milestone, an error-corrected logical qubit. Right. And from there, we'll tile thousands of those together to reach our ultimate goal, an error-corrected quantum, quantum computer. computer. Right. That's my goal, too. Well, you're in luck. We're building a team to assemble all the right ingredients all right here in the Quantum AI campus that you just helped us unveil. So thank you very much, Michael. Uh, no, you know what? Thank you, and thank you for everyone uh, that's joining us. Uh, I want to leave you with a couple of my favorite words that I just learned, uh, one of them being qubits, cute qubits, uh, cryostat, right, and melon chilies. Tundar. It was a pleasure doing science with you. Я правильно понял то, что первый майлстон получается какой-то кубит, который будет э, защищать от ошибок? А, не, значит, смотри, сначала они могут просто посчитать, э, провести вычисление какое-то. Да? Uh -huh. Но проблема в том, что э, есть ошибки, да, то есть они могут провести вычисление тысячу uh -huh. раз, большинство времени будет правильно, но типа какая-то часть будет неправильная. А, соответственно, следующее это понять, где были ошибки, как бы, и восстановить. Uh -huh. а, по, ну, как бы мы сейчас между первым и вторым. А последний, соответственно, уже отсутствие ошибок. То есть они так сильно завернут этот, этот комп, чтобы и вообще ничего не влияло на эти кубиты, я так понимаю. Вот, то что, ну, типа, говоришь, есть же, типа, говорят, что в квантовой механике, даже если ты наблюдаешь за атомом, то там уже что-то меняется, поэтому... Uh, да, это, ну, это в целом просто они рассказывают про квантовые компьютеры. Мы смотрим Google I.O. Привет, Big In Skill. Uh, мы, мы смотрим конференцию от Google. Вот, и они на данный момент рассказывают про квантовые компьютеры. Uh, есть смайл Боба, Боба Росса на Твиче. Круто. Uh, человек прикольный. Так, смотрим дальше. Ну, мне понравилось. We recognize that building an error-corrected quantum computer will be incredibly challenging. But solving hard problems and advancing the state of the art is how we build the most helpful products. At Google, we know that our products can only be as helpful as they are safe. And advances in computer science and AI are how we continue to make them better. 
we keep more users safe by blocking malware, phishing attempts, spam messages, and potential cyber attacks than anyone else in the world. And our focus on data minimization pushes us to do more with two years ago at IO, I announced Auto Delete, which encourages users to have their activity data automatically and continuously deleted. We have since made Auto Delete the default for all new Google accounts. Now, after 18 months, we automatically delete your data unless you tell us to do it sooner. And this is now active for over 2 billion accounts. All our products are guided by three important principles. With one of the world's most advanced security infrastructures, our products are secure by default. We strictly uphold responsible data practices, so every product we build is private by design. And we create easy to use privacy and security settings so you are in control. I'd like to invite Jen on stage to share some examples of how we apply these principles and make every day safer with Google. Я хотел спросить, кто стучит по микрофону? Такой звук был просто вообще жесть. Мне сказали, что меня тихо слышно, поэтому я подвинул себе микрофон. Так, ну короче, если Сандар это менеджер, 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 менеджер моего менеджера, то вот эта тетя ко мне на одну ступеньку ближе, вот. <laughs> Чтобы понимали примерно структуру в, в Которая сейчас будет? А, ну, что, что типа Сандар, ее менеджер, а она менеджер меня через 10 цепочек, короче. Вот. Ага. Вот. И, ну, в принципе, вообще без, вот от privacy и безопасности, типа, очень большая тема. Все, все подают на всех в суд и зашибают много денег. Ну и, короче... Все хотят безопасности, это одна из основных претензий как раз Google, потому что Google собирает кучу данных про людей, использует для рекламы, поэтому они сейчас расскажут, что, что они с этим сделают. Thanks, Sundar. We believe that protecting your privacy starts with the world's most advanced security. Seems like Every day we hear about another cyber attack that puts emails and personal data at risk. To keep our users safe, everything we build is secure by default. Each of our products is protected with advanced AI-driven technologies. In fact, every day, Gmail automatically blocks more than 100 million phishing attempts. Google Photos encrypts 4 billion photos. And Google Play Protect runs security scans on 100 billion installed apps around the world. But The single most common security vulnerability today is still bad passwords. Consumer research has shown that two-thirds of people admit to using the same password across accounts, which multiplies their risk. Ultimately, we're on a mission to create a password-free future. That's why no one is doing more than we are to advance phone-based authentication. And in the meantime, we're focused on helping everyone use strong, unique passwords for every account. Our password manager creates, remembers, saves, and autofills passwords for you. It's already used by over half a billion people. But we... А недавно у меня, короче, потерял он все пароли. <laughs> И мне пришлось все восстанавливать. Want to free everyone from password pain. That's why today we're announcing four new upgrades that make our password manager more helpful. First, we're making it easier than ever to get started with a simple tool that imports passwords saved in other password managers. Next, we'll have deeper integration across both Chrome and Android. So your secure passwords go with you from sites to apps. Third, automatic password alerts will let you know if we detect any of your saved passwords have become compromised in a third party breach. And lastly, what I'm especially excited about, a quick fix feature in Chrome, where the assistant will help you navigate directly to your compromised accounts Plus. and change your passwords in a little И меня Google постоянно ругается, и я где-то, наверное, на протяжении последних месяцев трех там mm -hmm. понемногу захожу и меняю пароли. И это очень долго. Mm -hmm. Да, вот это будет очень круто. Я... Интересно, что есть же целые компании, которые занимаются вот конкретно вот этим. Типа есть OnePassword, есть Dash, или Dash Password, как они называются. И сейчас Google очень много хлеба у них, мне кажется, заберет, да? Ну, не знаю. Я, на самом деле, хочу на какое-нибудь физическое устройство перейти с возможностью бэкапов. Вот, потому что бывает то, что хочется принести и всякое такое. Uh -huh. а, ну, так а, они потом это добавят просто, и все. Там, у них как бы фишка в том, что они основные сейчас фичи покрывают. Но, но в целом будет нормальный менеджер пароля. Особенно учитывая, что теперь они и Android тоже поддерживают. Это круто. 
синхронизация была настроена в том-то и дело. То есть у меня из аккаунта куда-то пропали все мои пароли, и я так не понял, что произошло. Очень странная фигня была. A quick fix feature in Chrome. Where the... вот, а диалог, наверное, Дэн вот про этот спрашивает, да? То есть они тебя перекидывают сразу. Да, вот есть еще key pass. А, привет, самурай. Я так понимаю, то, что это вообще ихняя форма, Я так которая с сервисом интегрируется. Интересно, я пытаюсь понять, что там за имейл какой-то Элизабет. А, не очень понятно. Мне кажется, что они все-таки в Твиттер тебя отправят, и там просто будет что-то типа айфрейма. Mm. Может и нет, а может это реальная интеграция. Было бы вообще гениально, если ты просто сказал бы, да, смени мне пароль в Твиттере на это, и все, и забыл про это. Да, это круто. Это был бы огонь. Я, я не думаю, что это то, что они вот сейчас добавили, но было бы классно. Ну, по крайней мере, пароль он генерится автоматом сейчас везде. Да. Да, вот это, кстати, уже, уже неплохо. А, да, походу будет работать для избранных сайтов. А, сторонние сервисы должны предоставлять, а, наверное, API имеется в виду. Да. А, да. Привет, Айчурсин. Ну что, круто. Мне, мне нравится. А, я стал замечать, что до того, как он стер все мои пароли, что я его использовал чаще и чаще, и что они шарятся между телефоном и браузером в хроме, а теперь еще на андроиде будет, будет вообще огонь. We never use the content you store in apps like Gmail, Photos, and Drive for ads purposes. And we never use sensitive information to personalize ads, like health, race, religion, or sexual orientation. It's simply off limits. And while we've always believed that ads play... Была же история какая-то, что Signal, по-моему, ну это типа как Telegram, только считает, что он очень private. Вот, они использовали Facebook, и они выложили рекламу, там же можно таргетить, типа, хочу показать рекламу женщинам, хочу показать топ, хочу показать все. И они прям писали, типа, Facebook знает, что вы там женщина, что вы любите, там недавно купили дом, короче, всю информацию вываливали, которая была у Facebook с помощью таргетинга. Вот, и получается, что ты, типа, смотришь что-нибудь на Facebook, и тут тебе, про тебя рассказывают все. Вот, и как бы идите пользуйтесь сигнал, потому что он не покупает это дело. Ну и, конечно, забанили такую рекламу, но в целом интересно, насколько много про нас знают э, эти платформы, где мы размещают рекламу. Вот, так. А, да, ну тут правильно вопрос, что делать, если потеряешь телефон? Ну, нужно, чтобы был залочен телефон, да. Uh, невозможно, как говорит Дэн, жить без лог-скрина. Да, я согласен. А так, uh, в принципе, тебя могут uh, с помощью паяльника uh, заставить отдать любые пароли в любом случае. Тут ничего не спасет. Through the open source privacy sandbox initiative, we're collaborating with publishers, content creators, advertisers, and industry organizations like the W3C to develop new privacy-preserving solutions that will shape the future of online advertising. Making our products private by design also drives us to build groundbreaking computing technologies that enable personalized experiences while protecting your private information. One technology we've been pioneering is differential privacy which allows us to use large aggregated data sets while guaranteeing that your individual data can never be identified as yours. No one has scaled the use of differential privacy more than we have. To help developers everywhere use differential privacy, we created the world's largest open source library of differentially private algorithms, which has advanced so many important fields, from cancer research to census analytics. Another important technology is cool. federated mm -hmm. learning, yeah. invented here at Google in 2016. It enables machine learning models to be trained centrally without any raw data leaving your device. 
And since building it into Gboard and messages, we've saved people countless hours of typing with helpful suggestions. This is just one of the ways we build for privacy everywhere that computing happens, both in the cloud and on device. And speaking of devices, to make billions of Android phones private by design, we developed Android's private compute core. It's uniquely open source and designed to privately process and protect sensitive data. It powers features like live caption without sharing audio data with Google or any other apps. No one else offers this kind of technically enforced, verifiable privacy. And the Android team will be coming up in a bit to share more. These are just a few of the ways we're building the most advanced privacy-preserving technologies into our products to keep your data private, safe, and secure. We know that a big part of feeling safe online is having control over your data. Privacy is personal. So we build powerful privacy and security settings that let people choose what's right for them. You can find them in your Google account, which saw over 3 billion visits last year. We also know that some controls are most helpful when they're built right into the app, like when we added an incognito mode in Search, Maps, and YouTube. Today, we're Чего? announcing a few new controls that you'll see in our most popular... А я не знал, что в Maps есть incognito mode. Серьезно? Я пока попробую посмотреть себя на телефоне. Or apps. For example, people tell us they sometimes wish they could easily delete the last thing they searched. And we heard you. So now, just tap your profile picture to access your menu and immediately delete recent search history from your account. We're also working to make privacy controls more accessible in Maps. Now, when you see places you visited in your timeline, we'll remind you that it's because you turned on location history, which you can easily turn off right there on your timeline. And lastly, we're rolling out locked folder and photos, first on Google Pixels and coming to more Android devices throughout the year. Photos you add to this passcode protected space are saved separately, so they won't show up as you scroll through Google Photos or any other apps on your device. This feature would have been helpful for me last year when we surprised our kids with a new puppy and we needed to hide the photos before we brought Splash home. As Sundar said, there's nothing more important than keeping you safe online. Building products that are secure by default, private by design, and that give you control is how we ensure that every day you're safer with Google. Ну, да, я напоминаю, что если у вас есть телефон с Google Maps, я так понимаю, то можно посмотреть, где вы находились вообще в любой день. То есть можно есть где-то Location History, и это выглядит немножко крипово, как по мне. Хотя, ну, мне, например, это даже нравится, да, то есть мне, мне, мне Там нравится... Там даже чуть ли не в любую минуту можно посмотреть. Да, мне нравится, я, я, я иногда, типа... Э, Беру там ребенка погулять, я не помню, во сколько я вышел, я могу <laughs> зайти в эту историю и посмотреть, где и когда я был. А еще на айфонах тоже есть такая штука, то что если, допустим, ну вот дома я сижу, да, mm -hmm. куда-то поехали, и мне сразу говорят, до дома там, допустим, 20 минут. Mm -hmm. При этом адрес дома я не вбивал, оно само определяется. А, ничего себе. Ну это, кстати, круто, но это, с одной стороны, логично, если ты в одно и то же место возвращаешься, типа каждый день и спишь там, и проводишь там ночь, скорее всего, это дом, да? Да, так, ну вот, есть чистка Map Location History, но я так понимаю, что более явно они позволяют... Можно указать адрес дома, но можно... Мне кажется, Лиз говорит, что можно и не, не указывая адрес, он считает, что это дом. Интересно, как. Маршрут в страву выгружал, я не понял. Ага, ну, самурай считает, что Лиз где-то указал. Uh, да, ну просто для... Я думаю, что... Нет, я не указывал этот адрес. Я думаю, что нормальная первая реакция человека, который видит, что Google знает, где он был с точностью до минуты за последние 10 лет, это, конечно, немножко стрёмно. Вот, и очень многие не знают. Google раньше писал, что до последней маршрутки осталось только-то минут. Да, кстати, недавно я видел, как у меня тоже, я пытался куда-то поехать, и мне показывали автобусы на карте в реальном времени, было прикольно. Но Яндекс тоже так умеет, да? Я нашел инкогнито мод в картах, я не знаю, зачем я его использовал бы, но прикольно. Just as we've engineered advanced computing solutions to protect your privacy, we continue to think about future advances in AI and their potential for making our products even more helpful. Not surprisingly, so much of what we do starts with search. And next, you'll hear more about this from Prabhakar. А, я понял, до последней маршрутки. Ничего себе, вот это, кстати, очень круто.
Это район Thanks, Jen. Today we are excited to share how our advances in AI are enabling us to understand the world more deeply than ever before, opening up helpful experiences for you across Google search, maps, shopping, and photos. Let's start with search. 20 years ago, Google was just 10 blue links, connecting people to the information they needed from the millions of web pages out there. Since then, we've continued to innovate to understand new forms of information, like images, videos, places, and more. All of this is in pursuit of our mission, to make information accessible and useful. As Sundar mentioned, early research with Lambda and multimodality is pushing the boundaries of natural language understanding. And today, I'm excited to share how we'll be bringing some of these research advances to Google Search with our multitask unified model, or MUM, as we like to call it. Third. Like BERT, it's built on the transformer architecture, but it turns up the dial. You see, MUM is a thousand times more powerful than BERT. <laughs> okay, but what makes this technology groundbreaking is its ability to multitask in order to unlock information in new ways. Here are a few tasks it can handle at the same time. Yes, it's it can acquire deep knowledge of the world. It can understand language and generate it too. It can train across 75 languages at once, unlike most AI models, which train on one language at a time. And then what makes MUM even more amazing is that it's multimodal, which means it can simultaneously understand different forms of information, like text, images, and videos. We've already started some internal pilots to see the types of queries it might be able to solve and the billions of topics it might help you explore. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say you're an avid hiker planning your next adventure. You might ask, I've hiked Mount Adams, and now I want to hike Mount Fuji next fall. What should I do differently to prepare? <laughs> this That's is a question so... you could casually ask a friend, but search engines today can't answer it directly because it's so conversational and nuanced. Mom is changing the game. With its language understanding capabilities, it would know you're looking to compare two mountains and also understand that prepare would include things like fitness training for the terrain and hiking gear for fall weather. Then, it's able to surface useful insights based on its deep knowledge of the world. Here, it's highlighting that Mount Fuji is roughly the same elevation as Mount Adams, but fall is the rainy season on Mount Fuji, so you might need a waterproof jacket. It would also give you pointers to go deeper on topics, like how to prepare the right gear with articles, videos, and images from across the web. Now, a huge limitation of accessing information is the language it's written in. If there are insights about Mount Fuji in Japanese, you might not know they exist if you don't search in Japanese. But MUM can transfer language across multiple languages to give you a richer, more comprehensive answer. But it doesn't stop there. Because MUM is multimodal, it can understand different types of information simultaneously. So now imagine taking a photo of your hiking boots and asking, can I use these to hike Mount Fuji? MUM would be able to understand the content of the image and the intent behind your query, let you know that your hiking boots would just work fine, and then point you to a list of recommended gear in a Mount Fuji blog. No, while we're in the early days of exploring this new technology, we're excited about its potential to solve more complex questions, no matter how you ask them. But we're already finding other ways to apply AI to bring you new information. Take Google Lens, which lets you search what you see from your camera, your photos, right from your search bar. Around the world, people use Lens to translate over a billion words every day. This translation feature has been especially useful for students, many of whom might be learning in a language they're less comfortable with. So now, thanks to our Lens team in Zurich, we're rolling out a new capability that combines visual translation with educational content from the web to help people learn in more than 100 languages. For instance, you can easily snap a photo of a science problem, and Lens will provide learning resources in your preferred language. Let's take a look at how a student in Indonesia is using this new feature. Nama aku Siti Nupisa, dipanggil Mamai. Aku kelas 9 SMP. Dulunya aku ingin menjadi ahli bahasa dan seorang dosen bahasa Inggris. Tapi kegiatan belajar di masa pandemi ini untuk aku sendiri agak lebih susah. Orang tuaku juga tidak bisa bahasa Inggris. Jadi, mereka tidak bisa bantu aku kalau kesulitan. Dia tanya ke orang, ibu kurang, kurang paham. Google Lens memudahkan kegiatan belajar di rumah. Misalnya aku mendapat tugas pelajaran matematik yang bertuliskan bahasa Inggris. Gak hanya translate, dari situ aku juga bisa terhubung dan langsung mencari tahu apa terjemahan dan solusi untuk mengerti pelajaran matematika itu. Untuk saat ini aku sedang berusaha keras untuk belajar lebih tekun, lebih rajin. Saya mau menggunakan pengetahuan saya untuk membantu masyarakat. Saya mau jadi anak yang membanggakan orang tua. Iya senang, ibu senang sekali belajar tidak pantang menyerah gitu. It's 
always inspiring to see stories like Mamais. And it brings to life the power of visual information, especially for learning. That's why we brought augmented reality to search two years ago at I.O. to help you explore concepts visually up close and in your space. You might remember the shark that joined us on stage. Last year, when many of us first started sheltering in place, families around the world found joy in AR. From tigers to cars, people interacted with this feature more than 200 million times. Now, we're bringing some of the world's best athletes to AR so you can see how they perform some of their most impressive feats right in front of you. Beginning today, you can see how Megan Rapinoe juggles a soccer ball or how Naomi Osaka pulls off a 125 mile per hour serve. You can even see Simone Biles land one of the most difficult combinations ever completed. We recently caught up with Simone to get her reaction to the AR version of herself. Let's take a look. So first you're gonna go to Google search. Google search. You can search yourself. Okay, Simone Biles in 3D. And then you're gonna view in your space. You gotta scan the floor. Let's scan the area. Ooh, okay. and she's here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Love yourself. Oh my gosh. She goes for the triple-double. This is very accurate. I see all the details that I need to get back in the gym and work on. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Simone Biles, double-double dismount. Pops up anywhere. Wow, look at that. Okay, so let's turn her so we can see it from the front. It sounds just like you're in the arena. Go down to 5%, little one. Oh. There she is. It's a bitsy Biles. That's the smallest triple double I've ever seen. <laughs> we need to start competing in AR. It's much simpler. Saves the nerve. Так, ну, хочу чат быстро прочитать. Так, значит, ну, типа, вопрос, что надеть завтра на улицу. Я думаю, что если можно ответить на это, то про завтра на улице это вообще легко. По поводу откуда телефон, это хороший вопрос. Ну, насколько мне известно, было довольно много программ, которые делают телефон на андроиде, типа, меньше сотни баксов, как раз для таких стран, где ни у кого нет денег, и как-то они распространяют. Может быть, даже в школе там дали, я не знаю, как конкретно это работает. Вот, поэтому... Но не, не 500 баксов стоит пиксель. Я не знаю, пиксель или, или нет. Вот. И как они интернет провели? Ну... Это я не знаю. А что там, в Индонезии горы? Я думаю, там просто типа остров, и ничего такого не происходит особенно. Ну, наверное, есть. Ага, Android One. Да, вот это, по-моему, дешевый, да? Ну, тут важно понимать, что, в принципе, количество людей, которые могут пользоваться твоим продуктом, оно довольно ограничено, потому что богатых людей в богатых странах не так много. И если найти возможность продать эти телефоны в какую-нибудь Индонезию, например, да? Или... В Индонезии, кстати, живет там типа 200 миллионов людей, больше, чем в России вроде. То это очень хороший способ увеличить количество пользователей. Вот. Сколько времени занимает у Гугла подготовка к такой встрече? Но они заморачиваются реально. То есть там есть целые команды, которые занимаются именно контентом. Поэтому это прикольно смотреть. Снято хорошо, да. В Индонезии они в ММО рубятся, я не знал, кстати, так что с интернетом не должно быть проблем, согласен. Вот, а по делу, ну, ну хорошо, ну прикольно, но пока ничего такого супер нового интересного не было. Да? Просто показывали, что мы меняем жизни, браво. No matter how many times I see that, I still think it's pretty incredible. Innovations like MOM, Lens and AR are part of our quest to make information more helpful. But information is only helpful if it's trustworthy and reliable. The world is constantly changing. Getting access to reliable information is particularly critical during times like the pandemic or breaking news. It's in these moments and so many others that people turn to Google. At our foundation, we design our ranking systems to prioritize high quality content. And for critical topics like COVID, we elevate information from expert sources. People come to Google to evaluate claims they've heard, whether that's in conversations with friends or something they read about online. Over the past year, searches for, is it true that we're even higher than how to bake bread? And that's saying something given last year's sourdough craze. We're building features that make it easier for you to evaluate the credibility of information right in Google search. One of the ways we're doing this is with about this result, a feature we launched earlier this year that makes it easier to check the source. Just tap the three dots next to the search result to see the details about the website, including its description, when it was first indexed, and whether your connection to the site is secure. This context is especially important if it's a site you haven't heard of and want to learn more about it. This month, we'll start rolling out about this result to all English results worldwide with more languages to come. Really? And later this year, we're going to add even more detail, like how the site describes itself, what other sources are saying about it, and related articles to check out. This is part of our ongoing commitment to provide you the highest quality of results and help you evaluate information online.
when we understand information, we can make it more helpful to you, whether that be information on the web, from your camera, or from the billions of places in the physical world. And to hear more about how AI is powering our most helpful map ever, here's Liz. Thanks, Prabhakar. We're constantly working on new features to make maps more helpful for the more than one billion of you who use it every month. Advances in AI are helping us reimagine what a map can be. This year alone, we're on track to release more than 100 AI-driven improvements to give people richer and more contextual information about the world around them. Let me share just a few examples. We've seen how helpful AR can be to see how athletes perform the most impressive feats. Three years ago, with Live View and Google Maps, we were the first ones to use AR at scale to help see where to go with signs and arrows overlaid on the real world. Today, we're still the only company who has AR navigation and maps in more than 100 countries, from big cities to rural towns. So far, though, Live View has been focused on navigation to help you easily get from point A to point B. But now, you can also use it to explore the world around you. You'll be able to access Live View right from the map and instantly see details about the shops and the restaurants around you, including how busy they are, recent reviews, and photos of those popular dishes. This is possible because we match what your camera sees with millions of businesses sharing rich information on Google Maps. In addition, there are a host of new features coming to Live View later this year. First, we're adding prominent virtual street signs to help you navigate those complex intersections. Second, we'll point you towards key landmarks and places that are important for you, like the direction of your hotel. Third, we're bringing it indoors to help you get around some of the hardest to navigate buildings, like airports, transit stations, and malls. Indoor Live View will start rolling out in top train stations and airports in Zurich this week, and will come to Tokyo next month. <laughs> But AR isn't the only way we're bringing a whole new level of richness to Google Maps. We've heard from many of you that you'd like to have more granular information about your surrounding. That's why we're bringing you the most detailed street maps we've ever made. Take this image of Columbus Circle, one of the most complicated intersections in Manhattan. You can now see... Oh, class, I was living... If this street will continue to the end of the next presentation, I lived there for a long time. So I totally know what's going on here. So you lived in the Broadway? Yes. Бродвей, ну вот, вот, этот, вот этот зеленый штука, это центральный парк, вот, и вот э, это э, такая круговая тема, вот здесь много дорог пересекается, вот, так что я, я, я точно знаю, что там происходит, посмотрим, что они скажут про него. See where the sidewalks, the crosswalks, the pedestrian islands are. Something that might be incredibly helpful if you're taking young children out on a walk, or absolutely essential if you're using a wheelchair. Thanks to our application of advanced AI technology and robust street view and aerial imagery, we're on track to launch detailed street maps in 50 new cities by the end of the year. Having access to rich information is useful, but it can also become overwhelming. So we're making the map more dynamic and more tailored, highlighting the most relevant information exactly when you need it. If it's 8 a.m. on a weekday, we'll display the coffee shops and bakeries more prominently in the map. While at 5 p.m., we'll highlight the dinner restaurants that match your tastes. You can see which places you've been to and get more suggestions for similar spots with just a single tap. And if you're in a new city, we'll make it easier to find those local landmarks and tourist attractions right on the map. Cool. You'll start seeing this more tailored map in the coming weeks. And as you're planning your day, people have found it really useful, especially during this pandemic, to see how busy a place is before heading out. Now we're expanding this capability from specific places, like restaurants and shops, to neighborhoods with a feature called area busyness. Say you're in Rome and want to head over to the Spanish Steps and its nearby shops. With area busyness, you'll be able to understand at a glance if it's the right time for you to go, based on how busy that part of the city is in real time. And as you heard before, we use our industry-leading differential privacy techniques to protect anonymity in this feature. Area busyness will roll out globally in the coming months. So that was a lot. To recap, we are expanding our live view capabilities, making maps more detailed and tailored and showing you how busy certain areas are to help you make sense of the world all around you. All of this is possible because of our deep, deep commitment for over 16 years to build the world's most helpful map for people everywhere. That means mapping roads across more than 60 million kilometers, listing more than a billion buildings, creating a community of over 150 million local guides, and finally, applying the most advanced AI technology, all so you can have the most accurate, comprehensive, and detailed map wherever you live in the world, on any device, Android or iOS. Access to rich information is crucial, whether you're exploring a new neighborhood or trying to get things done. And over the past year, that's increasingly meant turning to Google to help you shop. To tell you more about how we're making it easier to shop online, from inspiration to action, here's Bill. Ну, все круто, ничего супер интересного, да? Да. Thanks, Liz. You've already heard how we're innovating to understand information and make it more helpful for you. We're doing this in a big way for shopping. 
More than a billion times a day, people are shopping across Google. And we're constantly working to make that experience better, whether you're browsing for inspiration or ready to buy. Now, let's talk about all the ways we're innovating in shopping. Many of you are familiar with our knowledge graph, which revolutionized structured information about people, places, and things. We're now introducing the shopping graph, our most comprehensive data set for billions of products and the merchants that sell them. Building on the knowledge graph, the shopping graph brings together information from websites, prices, reviews, videos, and most importantly, the product data we receive from brands and retailers directly. Because the shopping graph knows about so many products, we can connect users with over 24 billion listings to buy those items from millions of merchants across the web, helping you find more of what you're looking for from a broader range of sellers, and giving you just as much or more choice in the digital world as you have in the physical world. The best part is that the shopping graph spans across Google, making it easier to go from inspiration to purchase no matter where you are. Let's see how this comes to life across shopping moments, from lens to search, photos, YouTube, and Chrome. As we all know, shopping inspiration often strikes when we see something we like in the world around us. And for these moments, Google Lens is awesome. It turns the world into your own personal showroom. For example, I was eating outside at a restaurant recently and really liked their patio furniture. So I opened my Google app, and right from the search bar, I could use Lens to find the exact set I was looking for, and similar items too. I showed the patio set to my daughter, but she didn't love it. So it was back to the drawing board. We did a bit more browsing together, starting with the Google Images tab on search, where we see hundreds of millions of shopping searches each month. Thanks to the shopping graph, we could explore options from across the web to find what we liked, see that it was in stock, and check out with the retailer. I have this habit though. I'm constantly taking screenshots of products I like. Так, он зашел в Google Photos и купил оттуда. Интересно. Дэн говорит, что бесит, как работает озвучка улиц на американский лад, типа Ленина улица вместо улицы Ленина. Но мне кажется, что это логично, потому что Ленина важнее, чем улица. Ну, чаще всего. Может быть, поэтому. Вот так, ладно. But they usually end up buried in my photos. Here's one I've saved for a pair of sneakers I saw. But now, to solve for this, when you view any screenshots in Google Photos, there'll be a suggestion to search the photo with lens. You'll see organic search results that can help you find that pair of shoes or browse similar styles. Then, once you have ideas, you probably want to do some research and might end up on YouTube. Слушай, Earlier this year, we shared that we're building a new experience. по поводу этого сервиса. Во-первых, да, это очень крутая штука. Я даже пользуюсь уже, ну, в... По-моему, она уже работает. Я не верю, что она работает так, но Google Lens точно есть, и там по фотке она что-то тебе находит. То есть, да, они же... соединили ее с покупками теперь. Да. То есть вот. она была раньше. Угу. И прикинь, такая штука, что есть такой сервис Pinterest. Да. Ну, наверное, ты знаком, угу. может, кто-то даже есть. И на самом деле это этот механизм, который... Ну вот, это была инновация от Pinterest, типа так делать. То есть там были собраны красивые картинки, девочки смотрели эти картинки, Uh -huh. там глядя на картинку да там видели какое-нибудь не знаю красивое колечко или там э, очень много там предметов мебели было и они uh -huh. тыкали на него и это отправлял их автоматически в какой-нибудь интернет магазин там в Amazon uh -huh. или в какой-то другой магазин так. вот интересно если сейчас Google э, тоже такой механизм будет использовать э, как это скажется вообще на будущем э, Pinterest потому что знаешь, ну это немножко Pinterest, если есть Google ну немножко разные темы но но этот Инстаграм же тоже так делает в последнее время. У них, ну, я не, сам не использую, но я слышал, что у них как раз появилась возможность а, прям покупать в, внутри Инстаграма вообще. Нет, покупать, да, но здесь смотри, в чем фишка. Ты видишь а, а, в Инстаграме, там, я, я тоже понял, как это реализовано, о чем ты говоришь, там uh -huh. немножко не так. То есть ты можешь действительно купить, но здесь как, ты увидел картинку, вот как uh -huh. на предыдущем скриншоте, там баскетболист какой-то, да? Так. Ну, а, или... ну вот, типа, вот мы крем увидели на Ютубе. Ну, на креме, понимаешь, видно, что написано и так. А вот так uh -huh. ты смотришь на баскетболиста, ты видишь, ой, классно у него там кеды или кроссовки, а ты не знаешь, что это за кроссовки. Uh -huh. Ты говоришь, Google Lens, типа, ну-ка, просканируй в одежду. И он тебе прям говорит, у него там типа, кроссовки, там, Adidas стоят 100 баксов, uh -huh. там, носки, Reebok стоят 20 баксов. У тебя прям все вот, ну... А, ну круто. Это офигительно, да, это вообще yeah. за этим будущее. Да. Experience. To make it easier to shop products you learn about from your favorite YouTube creators. That experience is in pilot now, so stay tuned for updates. And since we're talking about researching... Ну, кстати, было бы очень интересно, uh, если бы можно было бы сразу купить, даже не переходя к uh, магазину. То есть, например, у Google... Uh, есть Google Flights, где можно заказывать авиабилеты. Вот, и у них с некоторыми поставщиками есть интеграция, когда ты вообще не выходя, не выходя оттуда, просто говоришь, используйте мои Google деньги, вот, нажимаешь, ну, нашел билеты, Нажимаешь на кнопку, и все, и, и у тебя билеты. 
И тут то же самое, то есть если можно было бы типа из камеры, вообще не, не выходя в какой-то магазин, заказать какой-то конкретный продукт, то была бы вообще бомба. Я не думаю, что это возможно, просто что никто не, никогда не договорится об этом, поскольку Конечно. магазинам важнее, да. чтобы ты к ним пришел все-таки, да? И посмотрел Но... еще другой товар, а купил еще и другой да, товар на да. да, и чтобы ты знал, что это за магазин. Но вообще в целом это было бы, было бы очень круто. Да, идея крутая. Да, но я думаю, что Google, наверное, может как-то проксировать это дело. Ну, надо посмотреть. У Google же была тема, где можно было заказывать Uber из Google Maps, не, вообще не открывая приложение Uber. То есть ты просто такой, хочу Uber, хоп, и, короче, к тебе приезжает Uber, тебе показывают, как он едет, и ее выпили. Я не знаю, почему. Мне было бы интересно разобраться. Мне кажется, что это закон, ну, мне кажется, что это как-то связано с антимонополией, потому что, ну... Ну, добавь лифт. Бывает... Добавь что? Ну, дру, дру, ну лифт это на, на, как бы другой а, Uber. Другой, другой, другой Uber? Да. Ну, да, наверное, можно было бы добавить несколько, но, возможно... Ну, мне кажется, это с этим должно быть связано. Я думаю, что... что... Если, если Google заключится с кем-то из такси, то сам понимаешь, что, скорее всего, там все остальные окажутся недовольны этим. Я думаю, что, скорее всего, это связано с тем, что Uber был недоволен, что они, люди не попадают в его приложение. Мне так кажется. Ну, никто не Слушай, знает. А вот здесь как раз таки вопрос. Потому что зачем, по большому счету, зачем Uber, чтобы ты попадал к нему в приложение? Ты же не сможешь заказать два такси одновременно. Ну, там, или заказать такси и еще чуть-чуть. А вот, кстати, это хорошая тема. Это как раз из-за того, из-за чего Uber выстрелил. И почему мы видим Яндекс Такси в России и так далее. Потому что Яндекс Такси и Uber, скорее всего, то же самое. Что, что они сделали? Они такие, так, ребята, теперь заказывайте такси через нас. И потом э, люди начали заказывать такси через Uber, через Яндекс Такси. И да. вот эти вот всякие агрегаторы машин, да, не, агрега не агрегаторы, а автопарки машин, они просто стали ненужными, по сути. Ну да. Потому что весь поток денег, все люди идут именно вот через э, Uber и Яндекс Такси. И поэтому, если Google сделает так же, то по сути Google просто отожмет бизнес Uber и Яндекс Такси. Нет, мне кажется, здесь немножко о другом. О том, ну, что типа, я ты думаю... прям в Google Maps сидишь, допустим, нашел в Google Maps, ты условно лазил ну, по Google Maps и пони... искал вкусный ресторан. Ты его нашел, и прям не переходя в Uber, ты прям оттуда заказываешь Uber. Да, Мне но кажется, ты понимаешь, что если Google приучит людей заказывать из Google Maps, завтра он вместо Uber поставит Google такси, и никто ничего не заметит, кроме Uber. А Uber будет просто таксопарком. Да, поэтому Uber важно, чтобы люди знали про Uber, и чтобы использовали приложение Uber. Я думаю, что, скорее всего, с этим связано. Да, ты прав. Вот, поэтому... I don't know about you, but I often jump around from site to site when I'm comparing products. And if I get distracted or close any tabs, it can be hard to keep track of items I found. Soon on Chrome, when you open a new tab, you'll be able to see your open carts from the past couple of weeks. Кнопка заказа приложения, которая открывает Uber, она есть и сейчас. Она есть и была. Но раньше можно было не переходя в приложение заказать Uber. Теперь уже нет. For example, I'm reminded that I've still got a shirt in my Tentry cart and a few things in my Lowe's cart. We'll also find you promotions and discounts for your open carts if you choose to opt in. Can... Ну, это, кстати, очень круто. То есть Google агрегирует все интернет-магазины в одном месте, да? Получается так? Немножко... То есть он сейчас отожмет все интернет-магазины еще? А, не, ну пока, пока он агрегирует просто, да? То есть... Ну, это пока. А потом он начнет агрегировать цены. Он уже, уже давно агрегирует цены. Уже можно искать всякие продукты, и тебе пишут, где дороже, где дешевле. Причем даже учитывая с доставкой и налогами. Ну, по крайней мере, может, в России нет такого штата, такой есть уже. Не, есть, есть, есть. Но не есть было вот такой интеграции, знаешь, что там у тебя вот в таком-то месте в корзине лежат там дрель и молоток, да, такое не видел. Да, да, это очень круто. You can see Electronic Express is offering 10% off. Your personal information and what's in your carts are never shared with anyone externally without your permission. Now, once you're done researching and are ready to buy, we also want to help you get the best value. Coming soon, we'll use your favorite loyalty programs from merchants like Sephora and Target to show you the best purchase options. In this example, since you're a Sephora Beauty Insider, you already qualify for a promotion. Вот это, кстати, тоже очень круто. Потому if... что обычно цены не учитывают, какие у тебя карточки есть. If you're not ready to buy, you can opt in for price drop notifications. Taking a step back, these experiences are only possible because of our vibrant community of retailers on Google. We're proud to take an open ecosystem approach that helps any merchant, both big and small, get discovered. And that gives you more shopping choices. This has been more important than ever in what's been a tough time for businesses. That's why this past year we accelerated our plans and made it free for merchants to sell their products across Google. Since then, we've seen an 80% increase in merchants on Google, with the vast majority being small and medium-sized businesses. And today, 
We're making it easier than ever for merchants of all sizes to get on Google. Together with Shopify, we're excited to launch a seamless integration so that the more than 1.7 million merchants on Shopify can reach more consumers in a matter of minutes. Shopify is a platform, which is not Canadian, which allows you to easily make your internet magazine. With just a few clicks, these retailers can sign up to appear across Google's 1 billion shopping journeys each day, from search to maps, images to lens, and YouTube. We believe you deserve the most choice available, and we'll continue to innovate on shopping along every step of the way. So far, you've heard many of the ways we're using AI to make information more useful for you. AI can also help us revisit our favorite memories and moments, especially this past year when many of us have been feeling nostalgic. To talk about new innovations in Google Photos, here's Shimreet. Thanks, Bill. It's great to be back on campus talking with you all about Google Photos. We capture photos and videos so we can look back and remember. They help us feel connected. And today, there are more than 4 trillion photos and videos stored in Google Photos. But having so many photos of loved ones, screenshots, selfies, Show all stored school. together makes it hard to rediscover the important moments. In fact, the vast majority of photos in Google Photos are, быстро, быстро, are never viewed. And we've heard from you how powerful it is to rediscover a memory that helps you tell your story and reconnect. So today, I want to show you new features that use AI to resurface meaningful moments and bring your memories to life, all while giving you more control so you can choose what you want to relive. Soon, we're launching a new way to look back that we're calling Little Patterns. Little patterns show the magic in everyday moments by identifying not so obvious moments and resurfacing them to you. I'll show you how this works. This feature uses machine learning to translate photos into a series of numbers and then compares how visually or conceptually similar these images are. When we find a set of three or more photos with similarities such as shape or color, we'll surface them as a pattern. When we started testing little patterns, we saw some great stories come to life, like how one of our engineers traveled the world with their favorite orange backpack, or how our product manager, Christy, had a habit of capturing objects of similar shape and color. Or for me, I received a pattern of my family hanging out on the couch over the years. We have so many fun memories there, but I didn't realize how many pics I'd snap until I saw this. These photos on their own wouldn't necessarily be meaningful, but when they're pieced together, they tell a story that's uniquely yours. As always, these memories are privately presented to you and are only visible to your Google Photos account. In addition to using machine learning to better curate your memories, we also want to bring these moments to life with cutting edge effects. Last year, we launched cinematic photos to help you relive your memories in a more vivid way. I want to show you how we're building on this feature with computational photography to make still photos even more immersive. When we take a photo, most of us actually take two to three photos of the same shot, just to make sure we get the right one. Any parent who tries to get all their kids smiling and looking at the camera at the same time will know what I mean. Cinematic moments will take these near duplicate images and use neural networks to synthesize the movement between image A and image B. We interpolate the photos and fill in the gaps by creating new frames. The end result is a vivid, moving picture. And the cool thing about this effect is it can work on any pair of images, whether they were captured on Android, iOS, or scanned from a photo album. Creating this effect from scratch would take professional animators hours, but by applying machine learning, we can automatically bring this experience right to your gallery. And we know that looking back is never a one-size-fits-all solution. It's more meaningful when you can look back on content that's personalized to you. So later this year, you'll see new types of memories that are relevant to the moments you celebrate, whether that's Diwali, Lunar New Year, or something else. For me, my family celebrates Hanukkah, so I can look back on a collection of Hanukkah moments right in my photo grid. In addition to providing... Нет, это не совсем то, что на айфоне. Это на айфоне, знаете, что происходит? Ты когда снимаешь фотку, он запоминает типа плюс-минус 10 кадров в обе стороны и потом делает из этого анимацию. Эта фигня делает анимацию из двух фоток, которые ты, ты снял. То есть можно сделать живую... Ну, типа ты снял типа 10 фоток с ребенком, и оно анимирует между этими кадрами. То есть это не, не совсем то. Я не знаю, как они связаны с вот этими живыми фотками. На Pixel у меня тоже есть живые фотки, по-моему. А, вот, ну, интересная тема. Personalized content to look back on. We also want to give you more control. We heard from you that controls can be helpful for anyone who has been through a tough life event, breakup, or loss. Specifically, we heard from the transgender community that resurfacing certain photos can be painful. So we are working directly with our partners at Glad and listening to feedback to understand how we can make reminiscing more inclusive. These insights inspired us to give you the control to hide photos of certain people or time periods from our memories feature. And soon, you'll be able to remove a single photo from a memory, rename the memory, or remove it entirely. We're making all these controls easy to find, so you can make changes in just a few taps. And so, this summer, you'll be able to uncover little patterns, rediscover meaningful memories, or immerse yourself in a cinematic moment. And you can do it all on your own terms with new controls. Looking back is an important part of the human experience, which is why Google Photos is making it easier than ever to relive your memories. Thank you. Мне кажется, или когда начиналась и заканчивалась эта презентация, я слышал аккорды, когда вот Mac включается, вот этот вот самый первый аккорд. Или мне просто показалось? Мне кажется, показалось, но меня не триггернуло, по крайней мере. Мне кажется, я бы заметил.
Меня а, просто дважды триггернуло. Интересно. Ну давай потаем на... назад и послушаем. А, да, я не очень понимаю, чем это лучше, чем маленькое видео. Но может просто тем, что меньше места занимает, да? Чем еще? Вроде все. А, учитывая, что я думаю, что пиксель может и видео делать, и все, что хочешь. Но вот они... Не знаю. Наверное... Да, не, не знаю. Не, не знаю, чем это лучше. Ну что, так, слушаем э, видео макбука. Звук. Чуть раньше, на секунд 10. So, summer, patterns, memories, вот это первый. Да, слышал? Ну, ну, с натяжкой. С натяжкой. With AI. Так. As you've heard today, we're using AI to advance our understanding of information and build more helpful experiences okay, across Google search, maps, oh, shopping and photos. Next, you're going to hear about innovations in our computing platforms. We're excited to show you all of the improvements to Android 12, the newest release of our open platform, starting with a fundamental change to how you experience it. I'll hand it off to Matthias to give you a look. Вот, кстати, у Google постоянно там всякие желтые, красные, синие, зеленые. Mm -hmm. а, на фоне, на картинке все это показывается, да? А у yeah. Apple радужные цвета. Ага. Ну, ну да, логично. Ну, не, не логично, а забавно. <laughs> как из Айков с цветочками вышел. From the beginning, design has made computers more helpful by making them easier to use, more personal. In 2014, we introduced material design to address the explosion of mobile phones. It set a new standard for Android apps, and for Google, it rationalized our products simply and beautifully. But today, the challenge is even bigger. Now we're at a moment where computers are showing up in places that we never imagined. It's also a moment where people are yearning to express their individuality and demanding control from their technology. We believe this is a challenge for the whole industry, to acknowledge that emotion is essential and that beauty is personal. To face this challenge, we had to question everything. Instead of form following function, What if form followed feeling? Instead of Google Blue, we imagined Material U, a new design Super. that includes you as a co-creator, letting you transform the look and feel of all your apps by generating personal material palettes that mix color science with a designer's eye and engineering UI elements to respond in real time. We can delight every style. A new design that can flex to every screen and fit every device. Your apps adapt comfortably every place you go. A new design that never compromises on accessibility, granting transformative control of contrast, size, and even line width. Material can satisfy every need. No longer defaulting to one size fits all, Material U is a radical new way to think about design. We invested years into advancing UI engineering, making it possible for any app, not just Google's, to blend in their user styles and stay unique and beautiful. As designers, sharing control of every pixel is terrifying, but that leap of faith is revolutionizing design across Google. For the first time, we can consider the details of devices together with the pixels on their screens. We unify everything that Google makes through common proportions, textures, and shapes. We give you tasteful choices, blending into your homes and complementing your wardrobes. More than choice, we uniquely tailor your Google products for the perfect fit. Beyond light and dark, a mode for every mood. These selections can travel with your account across every app and every device. Material U comes first to Google Pixel this fall, including all of your favorite Google apps. And over the following year, we will continue our vision, bringing it to the web, Chrome OS, wearables, smart displays, and all of Google's products. Material U is a way to design differently. We can't wait to see what brings you joy and what you find beautiful. Next are the details of Android 12. Beyond the redesigned widgets and your material palette, Samir will show you our most personal OS ever. Ну, учитывая, что у меня на на телефоне черно-белый фильтр, ну прикольно, ну прикольно. Мне понравилось, красивенько. Очень круто. Очень круто. Тебе тоже понравилось? Ну, сделай просто, оставь ее фоном, сделай просто звук, убери. Смотри. Мне очень понравилось, да. Я не хочу делать... Э, менять звук, чтобы был постоянно один и тот же уровень. Hi, everyone. It's great to be back live at Google I.O. What you just saw was a peek into the biggest design change to Android in years. And we're going to go through all of it. But first, I wanted to share some exciting news with you. Just this week, we crossed an amazing milestone. There are now 3 billion active Android devices around the world. 
This would never have been possible without the entire Android ecosystem. But there's so much more to do, and Android 12 is one of our most ambitious releases ever. There are three big themes that we're focused on. First, smartphones are deeply personal, and we think your phone should adapt to you, not the other way around. Second, to keep your personal information safe, the OS should be secure by default and private by design. And third, we want all of your devices, TVs, cars, watches, and more, to work better together with your phone at the center. I'm excited. Интересно, что пропал well-being, потому что последние пару лет именно well-being было типа основной темой. Но что-то она затухла и ничего не поменялось. I need to show you more. So let's start by taking a look at our new UI for Android. We've overhauled everything from the lock screen to system settings, revamping the way we use color, shapes, light, and motion, inspired by Material U. Let me show you what we've done with color. We've got something new planned for Google Pixel using what we call color extraction. Think of it as one part art and one part science. Watch what happens when the wallpaper changes. Like if I use this picture of my kids actually getting along for once. I set it as my background and voila, the system creates a custom palette based on the colors in my photo. We use a clustering algorithm with material color targets to determine which colors are dominant, which ones are complementary, and which ones just look great together. It then applies hues across different parts of the interface. In other words, it's going to be beautiful. The result is a one-of-a-kind design, just for you, and you'll see it first on Google Pixel in the fall. But this new UI is more than a visual redesign. Many interactions have been simplified and system spaces purposefully reimagined. Starting from the lock screen, the design is more playful with dynamic lighting. Pick up your phone and it lights up from the bottom of your screen. Press the power button to wake up the phone instead and the light ripples out from your touch. Even the clock is in tune with you. When you don't have any notifications, it appears larger on the lock screen, so you know you're all caught up. The notification shade is more intuitive with a crisp at-a-glance view of your app notifications, whatever you're currently listening to or watching, and quick settings that give you control over the OS with just a swipe and a tap. The quick setting space doesn't just look and feel different. It's been redesigned to include Google Pay and home controls while still allowing for customization. So you can have everything you need right at your fingertips. Так как home controls uh, есть, если зажать uh, выключение. <laughs> Дэну не нравится. <laughs> Дуру верни стену. And now you can invoke the Google Assistant by long pressing the power button, making it easier than ever to harness the power of Google. Our engineers have done some pretty amazing work on performance in Android 12 to make all the motion and animation in the UI super smooth. We greatly reduced lock contention in key system services such as Activity, Window, and Package Manager. And the team also reduced the CPU time of Android's system server by a whopping 22%. Basically, everything's faster. There's a lot to explore in this new design, and I can't wait for you all to try it out. Now, the design isn't the only part of the device that's personal. Our phones hold so much important information, and it's critical to keep it private and secure. To tell you more about that, let me hand it off to Suzanne. Hi, everyone. From our first device to three billion today, we've designed security and privacy for everyone, no matter how expensive their device is. We built game-changing capabilities for everyone, from file-based encryption to TLS by default and secure DNS to prevent traffic tampering and data breaches. And since 2017, Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy have continually received the highest security rating in Gartner's annual mobile OS comparison report. Simply put, the most secure devices run on Android. And with Android 12, we're going even further to keep your information safe. Let's start with a common experience. Granting an app access to sensitive information. Turn-by-turn -turn directions based on your precise location are really helpful, but we recognize that this access can also raise privacy questions. To give people more transparency and control, we've created a new privacy dashboard that shows you what type of data was accessed and when. This dashboard reports on all the apps on your phone, including all of your Google apps. And we've made it really easy to revoke an app's permission directly from the dashboard. We've also added an indicator to make it clear when an app is using your camera or microphone. But let's take that a step further. If you don't want any apps to access the microphone or camera, even if you've granted them permission in the past, we've added two new toggles in quick settings, so you can completely disable those sensors for every app. That's pretty cool. So those are a few examples of privacy you can immediately see. We're excited to share more on under the hood privacy, privacy that's baked into the heart of Android. As machine vision, speech recognition, and AI become increasingly beneficial, there are even more opportunities for the OS to be helpful. And to make it easier for everyone to embrace these new innovations, we're combining cutting edge features with powerful privacy. You heard Jen talk about the ways we're building private by design technology. Thanks to advances here, with Android's private compute core, we're able to introduce new features using our unique AI capabilities while still keeping your personal information safe, private, and local to your phone. Android's private compute core enables things like Now Playing, which tells you what song is playing in the background, and Smart Reply, which suggests responses to your chats based on your personal reply patterns. And there's more to come later this year. And by the way, all of the sensitive audio and language processing happens exclusively on your device. It's isolated from the network to preserve your privacy. And like the rest of Android, Private Compute Core is open source. It's fully inspectable and verifiable by the security community. А как они сделают, какая песня играет на фоне, на девайсе? То есть они что, скачают тебе базу данных со снапшотами всех песен, что ли? Интересно. Android is the first commercial mobile operating system to enable technically enforced privacy like this. And this is just one of the ways we'll continue to pioneer innovation while also maintaining the highest standards of... 
we just Actually, I wake up and I kind of think to myself out of it. А, нас переключили на Developer Keynote. Так, а как мне вернуться? Так. Google I.O. Consumer Keynote нам нужен, да? Так, Google's YouTube channel, вот куда мы идем. Ага, я не знал, что оно пару лет работает в офлайне, но прикольно. Так, видео, наверное, да? Так, мне не нужна нотификация от YouTube. Непонятно. Ну что, давайте вот это, да? Sign language. We build is secure by default. А, тут будет типа специальная тетя, да? А где без sign language? Походу, они потеряли ее куда-то, да? Ну, давайте так. I can't take this anymore. He said, get my drum kit out of the garage and so we. Over the past year. Searches for <laughs> doing this in a big way for shopping become increasingly beneficial. There are even more opportunities for the OS to be helpful. Yes, and to make it easier for everyone to embrace these new innovations, we're combining cutting edge features with powerful pressure. privacy. Car key will allow you to lock, unlock, and start your car. There is a new design that includes you as our actions have been simplified and system spaces purposefully reimagined. Starting from the lock screen, the design is more playful with dynamic lighting. Pick up your phone and it lights up from а, вот. А, прям в описании видеоролика должна быть ссылка. Да. А, вот. Ага, And we've made it really easy to revoke an app's permission directly from the dashboard. We can uh, try to make it clear that an app is using your camera or microphone. Uh, But let's take that a step further. If you don't want any apps to access the microphone or camera, even uh. if you granted them permission in the past, we've added two new toggles in quick settings, so you can completely disable those sensors for every app. So those are a few examples of privacy you can immediately see. We're excited to share more on under the hood privacy, privacy that's baked into the heart of Android. As machine vision, speech recognition, and AI become increasingly beneficial, there are even more opportunities for the OS to be helpful. And to make it easier for everyone to embrace these new innovations, we're combining cutting edge features with powerful privacy. You heard Jen talk about the ways we're building private by design technology. Thanks to advances here with Android's private compute core, we're able to introduce new features using our unique AI capabilities while still keeping your personal information safe, private, and local to your phone. Android's private compute core enables things like now playing, which tells you what song is playing in the background, and smart reply, which suggests responses to your chats based on your personal reply patterns. And there's more to come later this year. And by the way, all of the sensitive audio and language processing happens exclusively on your device. It's isolated from the network to preserve your privacy. And like the rest of Android, Private Compute Core is open source. It's fully inspectable and verifiable by the security community. Android is the first commercial mobile operating system to enable technically enforced privacy like this. And this is just one of the ways we'll continue to pioneer innovation while also maintaining the highest standards of privacy, security, and safety. And there's a whole lot more for privacy and security in Android 12, which you can hear about in our What's New in Android Privacy session later today. Now I'll hand it back to Samir to talk about how we're building for a multi-device world. Hey, Suzanne. Phones have become the center of our digital lives, and they interact with a ton of other devices we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Laptops, TVs, cars, and more. This next chapter of Android is focused on delightful and helpful experiences across all the devices that are connected to your phone, so that everything just works better together. Let's start by looking at how your phone works with your Chromebook. With a single tap, you can unlock and sign into your Chromebook when your phone is nearby. Incoming chat notifications from apps on your phone are right there in Chrome OS. And soon, if you want to share a picture, one click, and you can access your phone's most recent photos. As another simple example, let's talk about your TV's remote. If your home is like mine, the remote is missing like 50% of the time. To keep movie night on track, we're building TV remote features directly into your phone. You can use voice search or even type with your phone's keyboard. It's effortless. For the more than 80 million devices using Android TV OS, this will work right out of the box. And we want all of your smart devices to work together, not just those in your home, even your car. In fact, Android Auto is available in more than 100 million cars. And the vast majority of new vehicles from loved brands like Ford, GM, oh, wow. Honda, and more will support Android Auto wireless. No more cords. We're also really excited to introduce support for digital car key. Car key will allow you to lock, 
unlock, and start your car, all from your phone. It works with NFC and ultra wideband technology, making it super secure and easy to use. Just walk up to your car, step in, and away you go. You go. And if your friend needs to borrow your car, you can remotely and securely share your digital key with them. Car Key is launching this fall with select Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy smartphones. And we're working with BMW and others across the industry to bring it to their upcoming cars. Okay, that was a quick look at Android 12, which will launch this fall. But you can check out many of these features in the Android 12 beta today. Try it out on phones from 11 device makers, including Google Pixel, OnePlus, and Xiaomi. From a personalized UI to industry-leading innovation in privacy and security, and better experiences across all the devices in your life, there's so much transformative technology coming to your phone this year. Now, let's go beyond the phone to what we believe is the next... Так, ну что, значит, э, дизайн, все понятно, privacy, тоже ничего такого супер интересного. Что он с пикселем работает, И напишите, если у кого-то есть пиксель, э, не пиксель, это как этот, хромбук, да, но пока ничего такого супер интересного не было. Next evolution of mobile computing, the smartwatch. Today, I'm excited to tell you about the biggest update to Wear OS ever. We've been hard at work in three key areas. First, building a unified platform jointly with Samsung, focused on battery life, performance, and making it easier for developers to build great apps for the watch. Second, a whole new consumer experience, including updates to your favorite Google apps. And third, a world-class health and fitness service created by the newest addition to the Google family, Fitbit. There's a lot to share here. So let's get started by talking about our partnership with Samsung. Samsung and Google have a long history of collaborating. From the early days of Android, whenever we've tackled problems together, the ecosystem has grown for everyone. And now we're combining the best of our two operating systems, Wear OS and Tizen, into a unified platform focused on faster performance, longer battery life, and a thriving developer community. Working together, we've made apps start up to 30% faster, and animations and transitions are super smooth. We're also addressing what consumers always want from a wearable, longer battery life. By taking advantage of smaller, lower power cores, we can do things like run the heart rate sensor continuously, letting you better track your activity during the day and your sleep overnight, while giving you plenty of battery to spare for the next day. This combined platform isn't just for Google and Samsung. It will continue to be available for all device makers, which means developers can build apps with a single set of APIs and reach millions of consumers all over the world through the Google Play Store. To hear more about our partnership, it's my privilege to welcome Patrick Chomay, who leads all product and experience at Samsung Mobile to Google I.O. Thank you, Samir. For the past 20 years, Samsung and Google have worked together and made Samsung Galaxy and Android successful. We strive to create innovative experiences for Samsung Galaxy users. Most recently, we pioneered foldable devices and so delivered rich communication same, experiences yeah. with Google Duo and Messages. And we are very excited about the new chapter of our partnership, wearables. The Galaxy Watch is already loved by Android smartphone users with our signature designs, cool watch faces ecosystem, and innovative health platform. We are bringing the best of these Galaxy Watch capabilities together with Google on a single platform, unifying the ecosystem for customers and developers. We work closely to optimize the performance, meaning better responsiveness and longer battery life. You will also be able to enjoy Google Apps and services like the Play Store, Google Maps, and more on the next Samsung Galaxy Watch. I am truly excited to welcome the developer community to our new vibrant and open ecosystem. Thank you. Back over to you, Samir. Thank you, Patrick. We're very excited about our partnership, and I know many developers will be thrilled about our unified platform. On top of this new foundation, Wear is also getting a big update to the consumer experience. To tell you more, let me hand it off to Bjorn. Thanks, Samir. Hey everyone, over the last seven years, we've learned a lot about what people love most about their smartwatch, and we've built a whole new experience with your preferences in mind. First, our new navigation system makes it faster than ever to get things done on your watch. No matter what you're doing, you can access shortcuts to important functions like instantly switching to another app. Let's say I'm running with Strava, and I'm about to hit that long, grueling hill. I just double press to switch to my last app, Spotify, put on my most motivating song, and then switch right back without missing a beat. It's such a simple thing for a more helpful and fluid experience. People have also told us they love getting glanceable pieces of helpful information just to swipe away from their watch face. So we're expanding our collection of tiles. Thanks to the new Tiles API, any developer can create one, giving people many more ways to customize their home screen carousel. Now I can go from checking my next meeting, to the weather forecast, to this new Tile from Calm, which helps me relax before a stressful event like presenting at Google I.O. We've also been hard at work revamping the wearables app experience with a material design update and expanded capabilities, starting with your favorite ones from Google. This includes things like getting turn-by-turn -turn navigation in Google Maps when you leave your phone behind, being able to use Google Pay in 37 countries and more than 200 public transit systems around the world, or downloading music from a catalog of more than 70 million songs for offline listening in the YouTube Music app, even without your phone nearby. We're thrilled about all the ways you'll be able to experience the best of Google on your watch. And speaking of the best of Google, I'm delighted to welcome the newest member of the family to Wear, Fitbit. Health and fitness is essential for wearables, and Fitbit has built a world-class service. So now, I'd love to welcome James to share more about our collaboration. Thanks, Bjorn. Nearly 14 years ago, my co-founder Eric Friedman and I started Fitbit with a mission to make everyone in the world healthier. We've shipped over 130 million Fitbit devices as part of that mission. But over time, we've gone beyond just helping people track their fitness to supporting them in their health journey by providing a range of devices from trackers to smartwatches, along with software and services that give users amazing health and wellness content and rich insights and analytics under data. 
And now that we're part of Google, we're working to bring the best of Fitbit to Wear. We will be making some of Fitbit's most popular features available on Wear watches, including tracking your health progress throughout the day and on-wrist celebrations to help keep you motivated. In the future, we'll be building premium smartwatches based on Wear that combine the best of Fitbit's health expertise with Google's ambient computing capabilities. All this is just the beginning of how, together with Google, we can do even more to inspire and motivate people on their journey to better health. Back to you, Samir. Thanks, James. I couldn't be more excited for all the updates starting to roll out this fall. Stay tuned for our developer keynote to learn more about new tools and libraries to help you build great apps for the watch. From a unified platform with Samsung to a new consumer experience and a world-class fitness service from Fitbit, this is a new era for the wearables ecosystem. So that was a lot. But before we move on from Android and Wear, there's something really important to me personally that I wanted to share with you. As the world's largest OS, we have a responsibility to build for everyone. As part of our ongoing commitment to product inclusion, we're working to make technology more accessible and equitable. One of the most important parts of any smartphone is the camera. Pictures are deeply personal and play an important role in shaping how people see you and how you see yourself. But for people of color, photography has not always seen us as we want to be seen, even in some of our own Google products. To make smartphone photography truly for everyone, we've been working with a group of industry experts to build a more accurate and inclusive camera. Let's take a look. People tend to think that cameras are objective. A bunch of decisions go into making these tools. And historically, those decisions have not been taking people of color into account. It's still reaffirming this idea that black people aren't worthy of being seen. So far, we've partnered with a range of different expert image makers. We've taken thousands of images to diversify our image data sets, helped improve the accuracy of our auto white balance and auto exposure algorithms, and given aesthetic feedback to make our images of people of color more beautiful and more accurate. The process was create almost like a guidebook to capture skin tones. I can't help but think of my mom, and she still thinks that she's not beautiful because the pictures were taken of her when she's younger. How many little girls are thinking they're not beautiful because they were the darkest skin person in the photo and they didn't get represented? The work is for us to do. It's not for people to change the way they look. It's for us to change the way the tools work. Our engineering team is learning a tremendous amount working with these experts, and we're making changes to our computational photography algorithms to address long-standing problems. For example, we're making auto white balance adjustments to algorithmically reduce stray light to bring out natural brown tones and prevent overbrightening and desaturation of darker skin tones. We're also able to reflect curly and wavy hair types more accurately in selfies with new algorithms that better separate a person from the background in any image. Although there's still much to do, we're working hard to bring all of what you've seen here and more to Google Pixel this fall. And we're committed to sharing everything we learn with the entire Android ecosystem so that together we can make cameras that work fairly for everyone. Thank you. Awesome. Assumed our shared, we want to build a more helpful Google for everyone to increase knowledge, success, happiness, and health beyond anything previously possible. Today, I want to bring you inside to see how our recent advances in image recognition are helping to solve some of the world's big health challenges. Let's start with breast cancer, a diagnosis that one in eight women will face in their lifetime. Mammograms can help catch breast cancer earlier, but half of all women experience a false alarm across a decade of screening. So we've been working to make mammography better. Last year, our research demonstrated AI's potential to analyze screening mammograms with accuracy similar to clinicians. And now we're collaborating with Northwestern Medicine on an investigative device research study to better understand how AI can apply to the breast cancer screening process. Let's hear why this matters. When we found out grandma had breast cancer, it was in the late 90s, and it wasn't something that anyone talked about. So my first mammogram was nerve-wracking. Waiting for the results, every thought runs through your head. What if they find something? It was the worst feeling. One of the greatest anxieties about having mammography is the wait. It may take radiologists days, sometimes weeks, to get through the list of mammograms that need to be read. This is a national problem. We don't have enough people doing what we need to do. With the research study that we're doing with Google, we're using artificial intelligence that scans the mammogram image. It helps flag patients that may need additional imaging. I get an email that says the patient has been flagged, and if I agree, we take the patient and they take more pictures right away. We're just at the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we can do with artificial intelligence. We would like to see that we are getting patients faster through the system. If we can show that, then we can potentially change radiologists' operations in such a way that they can prioritize patients that need care first. So it will be very exciting to see the results of this. Ну вот это, кстати, самая подходящая тема, мне кажется, для машин лернинга. Вот именно паттерны, оно прям предрасположено к этому. И я тоже слышал, что были исследования, и что роботы определяют не хуже врачей такие штуки. Я думаю, что это прям очень круто. Дэн говорит, что Google умеет мерить пульс с помощью камеры. Да, я видел тоже, не помню про Google это было или вообще просто, что у тебя меняется цвет лица, короче, и вообще все кожи, в зависимости от пульса, просто ну, люди это не замечают. Вот, да, это круто. Mm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
This is a great example of how we're learning if AI could support clinicians in their work to triage patients. At Google, we want everyone to have the highest quality care. Technology can and should help close the equity gap. That's why we're working to bring this technology to bear on important global health challenges, from diabetic retinopathy to our new work to improve tuberculosis detection using image recognition on chest X-rays. We also believe AI can assist you in your daily health. People come to Google search every day to ask questions about their health. For example, we see billions of queries each year related to dermatologic issues. This is no surprise because derm conditions affect about 2 billion people globally. There are not enough specialists to meet the need. And so we wondered, how can AI help when you're searching and asking, what is this? Meet our AI-powered dermatology assist tool, a class one CE-marked medical device that uses machine learning to help find answers to common derm conditions, right from your smartphone or computer. From your phone, just upload three different photos taken from various angles of the skin, hair, or nail issue that you want to learn about, and answer some basic questions about your symptoms. The AI model handles the rest. In a matter of seconds, you will have a list of possible matching dermatologic conditions, and then we can help you get relevant information to learn more. It seems simple. Developing an effective AI model for dermatology requires the capability to interpret millions and millions of images, inclusive of a full range of skin types and tones. When available, this tool will be accessible from your browser and cover 288 conditions, including 90% of the most commonly searched derm-related questions on Google. Plus. We're working to make it available to consumers on Google search in the EU as early as the end of this year. We've just looked at ways we're applying AI to support people and caregivers everywhere. But health isn't just driven by medical care. It's also about our social and emotional well-being. And that's where staying connected comes in. To find out how Google is helping, we pass it back to Sundar. No, it's actually just good. То есть получается, что можно э, какой-то что-то типа диагностировать у себя, да, не, не выходя из дома, просто с телефона. Это круто, потому что обычно все эти, ну, фитбиты, все такие псевдомедицинские штуки, они пишут, что типа мы не доктор, мы вам ничего не можем диагностировать. А эти как раз наоборот, я так понимаю, что они действительно могут э, сделать что-то подтвержденное исследованиями. Я думаю, что это очень круто. Thank you, Dr. DeSalvo. It's exciting to see the ways in which AI and image recognition are transforming healthcare. There are two additional areas of research where AI will have long-term impact. The first feels incredibly timely. We were all grateful to have video conferencing over the last year. It helped us stay in touch with family and friends and kept businesses and schools going. But there is no substitute for being together in the room with someone. So several years ago, we kicked off a project to use technology to explore what's possible. We call it Project Starline. It builds on the different areas of computer science I spoke about today and relies on custom-built hardware and highly specialized equipment. It's early and currently available in just a few of our offices, but we thought it'd be fun to give you a look at people experiencing it for the first time. Let's take a look. When I walked into the room, I was a little suspicious. What is this? I couldn't quite understand what was going to happen when that screen lit up. Eddie! <laughs> <laughs> so, you look beautiful. I could feel her and see her, and it was this, like, 3D experience. <laughs> I just saw my sister as if she was right in front of me. I really, really felt like she and I were in the same room. It was like she was here. Some key advances have made this experience possible. First, using high resolution cameras and custom built depth sensors, we capture your shape and appearance from multiple perspectives, and then fuse them together to create an extremely detailed real time 3D model. The resulting data is huge, many gigabits per second. To send this 3D imagery over existing networks, we developed novel compression and streaming algorithms that reduce the data by a factor of more than 100. And we have developed a breakthrough light field display that shows you the realistic representation of someone sitting right in front of you in three dimensions. As you move your head and body, our system adjusts the images to match your perspective. You can talk naturally, gesture, and make eye contact. It's as close as we can get to the feeling of sitting across from someone. As sophisticated as the technology is, it vanishes, so you can focus on what's most important. With Project Starline, we brought together a set of advanced technologies with the goal of creating the best communications experience possible. We have spent thousands of hours testing it in our own offices, and the results are promising. There's also excitement from our lead enterprise partners. We plan to expand access to partners in healthcare and media. In pushing the boundaries of remote collaboration, we've made technical advances that will improve our entire suite of communications products. We look forward to sharing more ways for you to get involved in the months ahead. The second area of research I want to discuss is our work in driving forward sustainability. Sustainability has been a core value for more than 20 years. We were the first major company to become carbon neutral in 2007. We were also the first to match our operations with 100% renewable energy. That was in 2017, and we've been doing it ever since. And last year, we eliminated our entire carbon legacy. Our next ambition is our biggest yet. By 2030, we aim to operate on carbon-free energy 24-7. This means running every data center and office on clean electricity every hour of every day. Operating 24-7 on carbon-free energy is a step change from current approaches. It means setting a higher bar to never emit carbon from our operations in the first place. It's a moonshot, like Lambda or quantum computing. And it presents an equally hard set of problems to solve. First, we have to source carbon-free energy in every place we operate, a harder task in some places than in others. Today, five of our 
Я объясню моншот, если кто не знает, что это у Гугла есть такая тема, что надо целиться в Луну, и, возможно, даже если вы десятую часть этого пролетите, то все равно отлично. Это называется моншот. Data centers are already operating at, at or near 90% carbon-free energy. In Denmark, we built five new solar farms to support our newest data center, complementing existing wind energy on the Danish grid. And it's operated carbon-free 90% of the time since day one. Another challenge of 24-7 carbon-free energy is just that. It has to run every hour of every day. So last year, we rolled out the world's first carbon-intelligent computing platform. It automatically shifts the timing of many compute tasks to when clean power sources are most plentiful. And today, I'm excited to announce we're the first company to implement carbon-intelligent load shifting across both time and place within our data center network. By this time next year, we'll be shifting more than a third of non-production compute to times and places with greater availability of carbon-free energy. To reach 24-7, we also need to go beyond wind and solar and tap into sources of on-demand clean energy like geothermal. Geothermal uses a consistent heat from the earth to generate electricity, but it's not widely used today, and we want to change that. I'm excited to announce that we are partnering to develop our next-generation geothermal power project. This will connect to the grid, serving our Nevada data centers starting next year. We believe our cloud AI, combined with the partner's expertise in fiber optic sensing and novel techniques, can unlock flexible geothermal power in a broad range of new places. Investments like these are needed to get to 24-7 carbon-free energy. And it's happening right here in Mountain View, too. We are building our new campus to the highest sustainability standards. When completed, these buildings will feature a first of its kind, dragon-scale solar skin, equipped with 90,000 silver solar panels and the capacity to generate nearly... Я видел, как это здание строится, я думал, что это за фигня такая. А это, оказывается, солнечные панели. Круто. 7 megawatts. They will house the largest geothermal pile system in North America, helping to heat the buildings in the winter and cool them in the summer. Sustainability is one of the defining challenges of our time, and advances in computer science and AI have a huge role to play in meeting it. So it's a fitting way to end our I.O. keynote. I think of I.O. not just as a celebration of technology, but of the people who use it and build it, including the millions of developers watching today. Over the past year, we've seen how technology can be used to help billions of people through the most difficult of times. It's made us more committed than ever to our goal of building a more helpful Google for everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Please enjoy the rest of Google I.O. and stay tuned for the developer keynote coming up next. I hope to see you in person next year. Until then, stay safe and be well. Так, ну чего? Кто у нас еще живой? Лисы, Лисы, Дим, мы еще живые. Дальше будет еще час developer keynote. Мы будем это смотреть? У кого-то есть силы? Я, думаю, я что... точно нет, потому что я ну... не понимаю, не пойму там ни хера. Дима, да, Диме не, не очень интересно. Лис, ты как? Ну, смотри, мы что-то прям очень долго засиделись и постоянно ставили на паузу, начинали это все дело обсуждать. Мне кажется, если смотреть, то просто звук чуть тише делать, но не останавливать. Ну, хорошо. Хорошо. Давайте тогда э, на 5 минуточек э, перерыв. Э, напишите в чате, что думают. А, э, Моншот — это почти как юношеский максимализм, только ты знаешь заранее, что может не сработать. Вот. А, так, давайте 2 минутки буквально перерывчик. Я возьму что-нибудь э, укусить. И тогда... Продолжим. Пока включи какую-нибудь музыку на YouTube. Эй, так он меня не, не забанят, потому что я на стриме музыку с YouTube ставлю. А, а ты стримишь где? На YouTube или на Twitch? Там, там. А, -а, а, тогда могут забанить, да. Да, я могу ходить, я вам поставлю четкую сначала. А, ну давай, давай ее послушаем. Так. Вон она, да. Да, все. Давай ее. Ага, за рестрим да, тоже... прям включай, как есть. А, за рестрим тоже забанят? А почему? А то, что нельзя? Ну, хорошо, ладно. И потом буду разбираться. Все, через три минуты приду и продолжим. А... Ты нам тетю включи. Включаем. Your 
А, тут какая-то наркомания творится. Ты нам включил музыку. А, я понял. Ну и плюс в целом там что-то вообще какая-то жесть. Ну все, давайте, короче, дело. Мне понравился этот трехмерный штук, интересно сделан. Так, все. Смотрим девелопер кино, да? А это оно? Да. Ну, я надеюсь. А, оно прям сразу продолжается? Да. Давайте попробуем еще раз двойную скорость. When Jason was in diapers, I knew he was going to be an unusual child. He'd be in his high chair at the dinner table, and if there was any music on, he would be beating on the table. Tap, 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 tap. We realized this kid needs some drums, because he's always beating up everything. And he had a band, and then life changed. January 9th, 2012. I'll never forget. I used to do subcontract work, cleaning restaurant exhaust. We'd usually do like two or three jobs a day, go up on the roof and spray down the duct. Just like I remember, uh, pin flash, and then like a loud boom. And I woke up in the hospital. When I knew that we were going to have to amputate his arm, he cried in my arms. He said, Mom, I'm never going to amount to anything. I'll never play drums. I'll never be able to do anything again in my life, ever. Так, теперь, наверное, еще лучше барабанщик. 
it looks. How fast are we going to change between the configs? Yeah, tons of ideas, man. Just like how accurate is everything going to be? You know what I mean? Nice. I was a little worried. Can we provide him with what we wanted in terms of the latency and the control? We don't, we don't know that it's possible. Okay, I'm really excited to see if we have signals. Ready? Ning? The goal is very simple, but in reality, in each of the steps, it's actually pretty complicated. Obviously, that's what happened last time. We have some crashes, and the stick sounds to go around. Maybe we should have Ragav listening also to get insight. So what do you want to do with you? Just take it away and move it. Whatever we're doing in the lab. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That might solve this issue. It could be also the power supply itself. Right. There are actually a handful of challenges with creating a prosthetic arm specifically for drumming. Latency is always a big concern. You don't want to flex your arm a second later for it to do something. It's delayed by it. It's delayed by it. It's delayed by it. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of nuance with exactly how the drumstick reacts. Things as subtle as how tightly you grip it, how does it bounce, they're really hard to calibrate if you don't have a machine learning system to gather all the data. When I heard about Jason's story, it really blew my mind. I was like, well, I had no idea how far we have come in terms of AI and prosthetics. So the way the arm operates is we use EMG, which stands for electromyography. Basically what that is is the sensors that are amplified by a battery that pick up electrical signals from our residual limb. Using these signals, we are able to do recognition of complex patterns in machine learning and then map them to specific movements. Tensor light is doing that in real time. And so I can flex my muscle and tighten the grip on the stick and I can extend my muscle and loosen the grip on the stick just like I would with a normal hand. No, latency is like none. Awesome, that's awesome. And in the last few months we were able to detect almost half percent of the time this intention. I can actually feel the feedback from the arm and it feels as close to a real hand as you can get without it actually being a real hand. I think what Jason and the team has accomplished is truly awe inspiring. He took what was a large setback in his life and he moved an entire field of research forward. So, Lucy, can I say? Lucy, what it might be. Yeah, I mean, there are drummers with. with Two sound hands that don't have double strokes that either. <laughs> it's amazing. For the first time, if you look at him playing, you may not even notice the technology. You just see Jason as a great and expressive musician that he is. <laughs> of course, I think there's a need to keep pushing on stuff because there's always someone that needs help with something like this, and, and AI is going to be the bridge between that. No, good job. Так, не так важно, что сейчас будут всяких людей показывать, да? I hit safety for a few seconds. Social is a software platform that allows farmers to check in on the business that they're doing with the facilities they sell their grains. We have over 40,000 farmers that use our tool. We started with Google Workspace all the way from the beginning. Everybody can come in together and work on these shared documents, uh, shared spreadsheets, keep track of financials. It's a big deal for us to keep things moving. Jake is the Google Doc starter. We get out of a meeting and he's like, yeah, let's put this into a Google Doc. And all he does is create the file. And then he's done with it. That's just how I roll. I don't think I've ever opened a Google slide deck and not seen Ryan's little icon in the upper right hand corner. You'll probably get 20 to 25 questions from Ryan. Yeah, I'm a comment check. Absolutely. Dan will dial in from that moment, the, the truck coming closer and closer. It was just scary. I was pointing and I didn't know what to do. I wasn't sure if I should try to relax or what should I do with my hand. I remember looking at my finger and like something's gonna happen to my finger. I remember a distinct smell from the airbags, kind of like a burning smell. Um, the jacket that I was wearing kind of melted a little bit. Okay. I remember just... Hectic. Это точно девелопер Да, они говорят, скоро мы скоро начнется. Ага. То есть они, я так понимаю, что они просто пока в перерыве показывают эти всякие ролики про как Google помог миру. Но это, кстати, крутая тема. Я слышал про это, что есть у них телефон. В телефоне можно включить Detect, как называется? Ну, типа, если ты врежешься в другую тачку, короче, то телефон об этом узнает и вызовет наверное, ну, 911 или кого-то там. Скорую, милицию. Вот. И... Пожарных. Пожарных. Да, короче, кого нужно. То есть, если даже, например, ты врезался и потерял сознание, то они вызовут кого нужно. И это очень круто. My pixel actually detected that we were in a car accident and started vibrating as if a, a phone call was coming through. And then at that point, it prompted me whether I needed to call 911, and it responded super quick. I don't ever really think about how's my phone going to save me today. Ah, then great F5. Ah, уже давно идет. Чего? Я думаю, это немножко другой все-таки стрим. Короче, надо все-таки другой стрим открывать, да? Ага. Так. Пойдем э, в куку. Видеос. Ну, пойдем на этот. Э, а где ты до этого смотрел? Google I.O. просто, да? А, нам Дэн скинул. А, скинули? Так, а как мне здесь-то это достать? Ты можешь мне скинуть в мид это дело? В мид могу. Да. Ага. А, нет, я не, это, я не висел на паузе долго, оно просто действительно обновилось. Fun. Так. Все. Так, все, я вроде нашел. Не, не, обновил, оно не, не появилось. Так. А можешь мне тоже включить? Сейчас. Все, понеслось, да? Так, это не продолжает. Ничего себе, то есть они наснимали всяких крутых историй. Как woods, you know, Google помогает разным людям, да? Ну, мы это пропустим, наверное. Не, не, мы не будем смотреть, да. 
the team partnered with Google oh, yeah, to like use an, truck, huh? it's a different vantage point than we're using. She has good attention, you know? Кстати, а вообще вот реально вот так вот выйти в долине куда-нибудь кофе попить и наткнуться на Брина и с ним попить кофе? Э, слушай, раньше, наверное, да, а сейчас я не знаю. Ну, сейчас, да, сейчас, наверное, сложно. А так, чисто, в принципе, наверное, такое возможно было, да? В принципе, да. Hi, everyone. It's great to be back here at Google.io again this year. I'm Jason Titus, and I work on developer relations here at Google. As Sundar said, we all miss being able to get together in person. And while this is a different vantage point than we're used to, I'm glad we get to get together virtually. We have over 225,000 registered attendees joining us from 181 countries today, with some of our largest audiences from India, the US, Brazil, Germany, and South Korea. Many of these communities are going through extremely difficult times at the moment, so wherever you are, we hope you and those you care about are staying safe. This year has been unlike anything I imagine we'd be living through. It's changed so much, including how we live, work, and interact with others. We've had to adapt to working together while physically apart and tackling problems we never imagined we'd have to face, all while dealing with tremendous isolation and loss. But technology has played a significant role in helping us adapt to these challenges, allowing us to do everything from ordering groceries to working from home to staying connected with our loved ones. As we know, crisis doesn't create character. It reveals it. And it's been amazing to see developers like you coming up with solutions to the problems around you. It's in our developer DNA. We're problem solvers, drawn to the hardest problems and using technology to tackle them. I've seen this again and again during the past year. In Kenya, there's a team at Flare who used Google Maps to create an emergency response app designed specifically for places without emergency phone service, like 911 or 112, which has helped save over 7,000 people from previously impossible situations. In Russia, there's Ivan Bakaidov, a 21-year-old self-taught programmer with cerebral palsy who develops apps for other people with speech and motor challenges to communicate. All of his apps are free and open source and helping people around the world. Video in in Texas, there's Mandy Price and her team at Canaries for using machine learning and natural language processing through AutoML to help companies with their diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. While most companies can measure the representation of their employees, the team at Canaries is using hundreds of data sources to quantify equity and inclusion, uncover structural bias, and drive systemic change. And in Bangladesh, we have the team at Maya who created a digital assistant for, so women could get health information and telehealth consultations in their native language. The team partnered with Google to use an end-to-end transformer-based deep neural network to train on their in-house data set, which increased the accuracy of their natural language processing to above 90%. Now their app can provide answers in Bengali to questions on 50 topics, and in the last year their platform has reached over, 90, over 10 million users. These are just some of the stories we've heard about developers around the globe who've built and achieved amazing things during incredibly difficult times. You've also found ways to continue to collaborate during this time. Around the world, our Google developer group leaders have stepped up in a huge way, figuring out how to host events that work for each of their communities. We had over 16,000 digital events last year, reaching over 3 million developers, which is nearly double the number of developers we reached the year before. That's amazing. And while it's not the same as working together in person, it's helped to support each other when we've all needed it. And we want to continue the support by meeting you where you are to help you solve the problems you care about and build the products of our future. And that isn't easy. We know it's hard to build in today's environment, and not just because of the pandemic. It's challenging to code for multiple platforms. It can be hard to integrate machine learning, and it's complex to manage user data safely and correctly in markets around the world. But across our products, we're working to make it easier so that you can focus on a specific problem you're working to solve. Today, you'll hear the latest on Android, the web, Flutter, Firebase, and machine learning. So thank you for joining us. And now I'd like to pass it on to Jacob, who'll start us off with updates from the Android team. I want to connect with people and then just get this conversation that we started here and make it happen all year long. Thank you, Jason. This really has been a year of huge changes for all of us. I remember watching what felt like futuristic video calls in the film 2001 as a kid. Now my three-year-old chats with her grandparents every week on Duo. We can't wait to see each other, but it helps us get through a difficult time. With people depending on apps more than ever, expectations are higher, and your jobs as developers aren't getting easier. We want to help. Today we'll talk about three things. Android 12 for developers, building beautiful high-quality apps with modern Android, and how to bring apps to large screens and wearables. Okay, let's talk about Android 12. As Samir shared earlier, Android 12 is one of the biggest design changes ever, with new experiences that keep people safe, and an all-new UI that is personal, smoother, and much faster. To help bring this to your apps, we're adding a ton of new features. Let's start with user safety. As developers, you know it's crucial that people trust your apps and the platform they're on. To earn this trust, we believe people should understand how apps use their data, have control over how their data is used, and are comfortable it's necessary for tasks that they've initiated. In Android 12, we're adding multiple features to help people understand how apps use their data. To check usage in your apps or SDKs, we're giving you auditing APIs and guidance. And to share more context about your usage, you get a new API, permission intent. To give people more control, we're adding features like approximate location so they can decide how much they want to share. And to help people feel comfortable with the data you're using, we're giving you Bluetooth permissions to scan and connect to nearby devices, no more location needed. Now, we also want to help you build delightful apps. To us, this means that they perform really well and are engaging. Most of this is magic that you add as developers, but the platform should help. First, performance. Sometimes apps are killed or notifications are delayed to improve responsiveness and battery. We know this is frustrating, especially when it's unpredictable. To help, two areas we focused on are standby buckets and foreground services. For example, the new restricted standby bucket lets Android limit background work in ways that you'll find predictable and transparent. Foreground services help people interact with apps that are doing work in the background, such as recording your morning run. But sometimes they're misused. Now, you can only start foreground services from user actions or external events. And for background work that needs to run immediately, we're giving you expedited jobs. To improve app startup, we're adding guardrails that prevent apps from using notification trampolines. Working with Google Photos, it now launches yeah. up to 34% faster. And we have new customizable launch animations знаю, and splash screens. Start мы будем смотреть про Android, это интересно или очень? Я не особо понимаю, что происходит. Они заменили на одну технологию, на другую, да? Я думаю, что если никто не против, можем пропустить эту часть. We've been hard at work improving the mobile developer experience, what we call modern Android development. You told us, keep the openness, but become opinionated about the right way to do things, and make the right way the easiest way. So we did. 
We know you need a powerful IDE that can keep up with you, a programming language that enables you to do more with less code, and APIs that solve the hardest problems on mobile, yet have backward compatibility. So we brought you Android Studio, Kotlin, Jetpack, and Jetpack Compose, our powerful UI toolkit to easily build beautiful apps for all Android devices. First, Android Studio. We want to help you build higher quality apps faster, like showing task results across multiple devices, debugging databases and background tasks with the App Inspector, or making your apps more accessible with the Android accessibility framework inside Android Studio. And for faster build speeds, we have the Android Gradle plugin 7.0 and new DSL and variant APIs. You can find all of this in Android Studio Arctic Box beta available today. Talking about build speeds, we are continuing to push on the boundaries of Kotlin with a brand new native solution to annotation processing for Kotlin built from the ground up. Kotlin Simple Processing is available today and is a powerful and yet simple API for parsing Kotlin code directly, showing speeds up to two times faster with libraries like Room. With over 1.2 million apps in the Play Store using Kotlin, it is the most used language by professional Android developers, including 80% of the top 1,000 apps, meaning it's a language that's chosen by apps that see millions of downloads and need to scale across those 3 billion devices. And here at Google, we love it too, with over 70 apps, including Drive, Home, Maps, and Play. Okay, let's talk about Android Jetpack. We took the hardest, most common developer problems and created libraries to ensure your apps are high quality and have backward compatibility. Over 84% of the top 10,000 apps are now using a Jetpack library. And today we're going further. We know that your app performance matters. We're launching Jetpack Macro Benchmark to capture large interactions that affect your app startup and jank before your app is released. It's now in alpha and is a perfect complement to Firebase performance monitoring for after your app is released. We're persisting data more efficiently with Data Store, a new Kotlin Coroutines API, now in beta, and first class support for Jetpack Compose with architecture libraries and so much more. And now for Jetpack Compose. We started building Compose in the open two years ago today it's here at Google I.O., listening to your feedback to make sure reach. that we really got this right with over 35 public releases. We took everything that we learned from Jetpack and Kotlin and we brought it to UI development. Thank you, Karen. Compose makes it a lot easier and also a lot more fun to build beautiful UIs. Today, I would like to show you how you can add Compose to an existing app. So here's an app I wrote using views. I have a recycle view, and when I click on an item, it takes me to the next fragment. I have a nested 12 view, I have a fab, and a bunch of other views. Now I would like to add Compose to this screen. So let's take a look at the code. I've already set up a Compose view inside my fragment, and I can pull set content on it. And that's pretty much it. That's all I need to do to start writing Compose code. So we're going to set up a theme. Then I'm going to add a list of material cards. And you can see the decorative model of Compose in action. It's simple function calls. We don't have complex XML. We don't have complicated layout arms. It's much easier than before. And when I rerun the app and we go back to that screen, you will be able to see our Compose UI in action. And it interacts naturally with the views around it. Now, here's something interesting. In every card, you can see this physically accurate view of the sky that's computed on the GPU using the selected time and location. It uses a surface view. That means I have views inside Compose, inside views. You have full two-way interrupt. Compose is completely compatible with your existing code and your existing custom views. There's one more thing I would like to show you. The cards are pretty big, and I would like the user to be able to collapse them and expand them. So let's take a look at the code. We're going to add a single line of code around the content of the cards. Animated visibility. And now when I rerun the app and I go back to that screen, I can tap on the cards to expand them and collapse them with an animation. It's that simple. So Compose is completely compatible with your code. Animations are a lot easier than before. So try it today. And now, back to Karen. OK. Thanks, Ramon. That was really fun. I love how animation is so much easier to do. And every UI component is material by default, so it's easy to build gorgeous UI. Stay tuned for the new material U components coming later this year for both Compose and Android views. We're building Compose to make sure you're productive, but also promise that it will scale. The API is fully Compose. <laughs> Другой способ uh, делать интерфейсы в андроиде, да? Зачем их два? Надо было слушать, наверное, что они раньше говорили, да? Your pressure testing the final bits, so Compose will hit 1.0 in July. It's a great time to start, so you're absolutely ready to launch. And about that openness, we have just open source Compose for Wear OS. The next era of Android is about enabling all your devices connected to your phone. TVs, cars, watches, tablets to work better together. Let's talk more about building across screens. Starting from our largest screens with tablets, foldables, and Chrome OS, there's huge momentum as people are relying on these devices more to stay connected to family and friends, go to school, or work remotely. There are over 250 million active large screen active devices. Last year, Chrome OS grew 92% year over year, five times the rate of the PC market, making Chrome OS the fastest growing and second most popular desktop OS. Android app usage has tripled in the last year. It's so cool to see how apps are taking advantage of the extra space of larger screens. Like Disney Plus, watch how this looks on a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. The app makes good use of the fun screen, seamlessly transitions to tablet mode, and even makes use of the new Hinge API to tell when the phone is in tabletop mode. We studied how people interact with large screens, like where their fingers and their thumbs are placed, and we're giving you APIs and tools to make that experience easier. Like having your content resize automatically to more space with sliding pane layout 2.0 or vertical nav rail. Max widths on components to avoid those terrible looking stretch UIs. Help updating fold and transition states with constraint layout 2.1 and motion layout. And updates to the platform, Chrome OS, and Jetpack Window Manager, so apps just work better by default. We're also making it easier for apps and services to access with voice with the help of the Google Assistant. We heard your feedback. Enabling assistive capabilities with your app is pretty hard, and it isn't part of your normal Android development flow. So using existing Android APIs, we're bringing voice interaction right into Android Studio. With Android Shortcuts and a new capabilities API, you can now create voice shortcuts for your app. You can optimize your widgets for voice by connecting it to an app capability and adding TTS support, allowing your app to share the big updates we had for wearables earlier. A unified wearables platform built jointly with Samsung, combining the best of wearables and in some cool ways working with The open web is grounded on interoperability, accessibility, and choice. Today, I'll share how we're working with you to add new capabilities and innovative approaches that advance what's possible on the web. We'll focus on three areas. Powerful new capabilities, performance optimizations for fast and seamless sites, and new solutions for user privacy. Together, we've been bringing more advanced features and computing power to the browser, from an array of new APIs to the ongoing evolution of WebAssembly, which lets you run code in the browser at near native speed. One trend that's really stood out in this past year is the browser's emergence as a first-class platform for voice and video apps, because it's so nice to jump right into a meeting without installing anything. And these new features are making these experiences even better. For example, when we couldn't gather in person, WebRTC helped Yahoo enrich the online event experience with live video chat. And WebAssembly's recently added support for SIMD processor instructions dramatically reduced CPU overhead for workloads like video processing and streaming, enabling Google Meet to make background blur available to twice as many users. 
Another visually immersive experience that relies on powerful browser capabilities is 3D mapping. And while Google Maps on the web has been using WebGL to deliver high-quality graphics rendering for years, it wasn't available in the Maps JavaScript API for developers. That changes today with two new beta features that allow you to tilt and rotate the map in 3D, while a new WebGL overlay view gives you the ability to render objects directly on the map for the first time, opening a world of new possibilities. Now, if you've been waiting for access to more device functionality, this year we've added a growing number of hardware APIs to Chrome Stable, allowing you to access nearly any device peripheral from your browser. And we're enabling access to the native file system for developers building text, photo, and code editors, so the Sacklets team could build an IDE all in the browser. And meanwhile, simply getting in front of people is something that we know every site cares about. Sure, sure, nearly sure. any device peripheral from your browser. And we're enabling access to the native file system for developers building text, photo, and code editors, so the Sacklets team... Ah, it would... Тот анонс от Stackbitsa, что можно локально редактировать файлы. Вот они, видимо, работали с чуваками из Google. Круто. Team could build an IDE all in the browser. And meanwhile, simply getting in front of people is something that we know every site cares about. So we've been working to better highlight progressive web apps in the browser to help people install and return to your app through their home screen, doc, or taskbar. And making it easy to list your PWAs in Google Play across Android and now Chrome OS with the Trusted Web Activity API. Plus, you can implement Google Play billing for subscriptions and in-app purchases with the Digital Goods API. All of this work to expand the web's capabilities and reach is empowering more companies to come to the web. Like TikTok, which brought its core experience to the mobile web in 2020 and desktop in 2021. So now people can find and share links to TikTok content across the open web. Or Adobe, which launched its rich Adobe Spark graphics and photo editor on the web to help creators and small businesses searching for a quick and easy creative app or students doing classroom projects on their Chromebooks. Or e-commerce sites like Rakuten, which built an installable PWA in quick response to a surge in demand for online groceries for the engagement of an installed app and the cross-platform reach and efficiency of the web. We love to see developers combine the web's core powers with new capabilities and give us a clear vision of what the web can be. And that vision has to include performance. So we're continuing our work to make Chrome fast for users and developers. Highlights from the past year include making the V8 JavaScript engine even faster and dramatically reducing its memory footprint, introducing a next generation compact image format, AVIF, and a back forward cache for instant navigations on Chrome Android and soon all Chrome versions. We're also glad to see that lazy loading of images is now supported natively across all modern browsers with the addition of a simple loading attribute. Of course, our work to build a faster web goes beyond the browser. We also want to help. А что значит lazy loading of images? Кто мне объяснит? Across all modern browsers. Что? Это значит, что если оно за границами экрана, то не будет загружаться, да? With the addition of a simple loading attribute. Понял. Of course, our work to build a faster web goes beyond the browser. We also want to help you improve your site's performance. So we examined millions of pages across the web to identify what makes a site feel fast to users. And three areas stood out. How fast a site loads, how responsive a site is to user input, and how stable a site is as a user reads it. We published these three metrics as the core web vitals to help site owners build the best experiences possible. Core Web Vitals are now integrated across many of our tools, like Lighthouse, and we're happy to see Core Web Vitals appear in analytic services like SpeedCurve and on CMS platforms like Wix. And this summer, Core Web Vitals will be added to the search ranking signals used by Google Search, helping users find relevant content that's fast and helping fast sites find new users. So to see how your site performs and learn how you can improve your Core Web Vitals, check out our measurement tools on web.dev. And finally, let's turn to the important work of improving privacy in the Chrome browser and across the web. In 2019, we kicked off the Privacy Sandbox initiative to develop new privacy-preserving technologies to help the web move away from cross-site user tracking while continuing to support the critical capabilities that keep the web healthy. This requires technical innovation and iteration, working with countless stakeholders across the web. Several of the new Privacy Sandbox APIs are now available for developers to test so that you can evaluate them and share feedback before they roll out to Chrome Stable for broader use. And once the new solutions are in place and working for users and the ecosystem, we plan to phase out third-party cookies in Chrome. We're committed to navigating this transition responsibly. That means continuing to operate transparently every step of the way, sharing proposals, learnings, and progress, listening to your input, and providing meaningful notice before we make changes in Chrome. This includes our ongoing efforts to combat covert tracking techniques such as fingerprinting. And we'll continue to improve Chrome tools and user settings for safety and privacy. So please bring your questions to our AMA and check out our full Privacy Sandbox session. We appreciate working with you, the developer community, to build powerful, fast web experiences that people love and that they trust. Next up, it's the Flutter team. It's been great working with them to add web support. And in a minute, you'll hear the latest on Flutter from Zoe. For these events, I come from Knowledge Networking to meet fellow developers and see what things can I bring back oh, to my community as well. No, no. Flutter is an open source UI toolkit by Google that empowers developers to build beautiful experiences across multiple platforms. With Flutter, you can use the same code base to compile apps directly into machine code for Android, iOS, web, desktop, or anywhere that you might want to paint pixels on the screen. It's the first UI platform designed for an ambient computing world. Traditionally, when building apps, the first decision you have to make is, where's my app going to run? With Flutter, you start on the experience you want to create and can shift to any device you want to target. And that's just the beginning. Beyond Google, a global open source community is contributing to Flutter. For example, Companies like Toyota, Canonical, Sony, Samsung, and the Microsoft Surface team are all working to bring Flutter to even more devices. Already, there are more than 200,000 apps using Flutter in the Google Play Store like WeChat, MyBMW, and Grab. Flutter is used by developers all around the world. For example, Bytes, the company behind TikTok, is using Flutter in more than 70 apps. Productivity is why they continue to use Flutter. Their engineers say... Зачем TikTok более 70 приложений? Хотя, а, ну это типа они делают другие приложения тоже, просто TikTok самый известный, да? ...to Flutter has allowed them to ship new apps and features 30% faster. Within Google, more than 30 teams choose to build with Flutter for its productivity also. 
This includes Google Pay, which unified its code base with Flutter and went from 2 million lines of code to 1.1 million, reducing it by nearly half. Today, we are excited to announce Flutter 2.2, which builds on this foundation. Here are some highlights. We improved the beta support for Flutter on desktop, so it's even easier for you to target Windows, Mac OS, and Linux from a single code base. In this release, we've enabled sound no safety by default for new projects. We're helping developers to eliminate a whole class of errors, increase app performance, and reduce package size. Additionally, Building on these enhancements to our developer experience, we've upgraded the Flutter DevTools to help you understand how memory is allocated in your apps. Another major theme in Flutter 2.2 is how we are investing in ways to help connect your apps to the rest of the Google ecosystem. We're launching a new payment plugin with Google Pay. We're updating the Google Mobile Ads SDK for Flutter. We're promoting the in-app purchase plugin to production. We're expanding the Google APIs and cloud services your apps can access. And we're committed to fully supporting Material U when they ship later this year. These are just a few of the updates in Flutter 2.2. Join our What's New in Flutter product keynote, sessions, and collabs for more. One more thing, here at I.O., we're celebrating by joining forces with Firebase, Google's yeah. mobile and web app platform to create a fun, open source demo showing how easy it is to build a Flutter web app powered by Firebase services. So before you go, head to photobooth.flutter.dev to check out the code and grab a photo with our mascot Dash. And with that, it's time to hear more about Firebase with Francis. Uh -huh. Ты I тоже love получается PM. твой, да, главный? Нет, он, он главный над pm ами Ага. То есть, ну, как бы мне он никто, но, типа, он, он решает, какие фичи будут. Но он, наверное, главный твоего главного главного. Нет, он параллельно со мной. Он именно с продуктами главный. То есть, ага. у нас две разные ветки, и вот, типа, он, он параллельно мне, моей ветки. Ага, чекнуть качество. Опять мы смотрим в 380, да? А, да, 480. Давайте 720 сделаем. Так. Our mission for Firebase is to empower you to succeed by making it easy to build and run mobile and web apps. Over 3 million apps use Firebase every month. We know you rely on our products like Crashlytics and Real-Time Database throughout your app's life cycle. And we rely on your feedback to continuously improve our offerings to suit your needs. I'm happy to share what we've been working on to help you accelerate your app development, ensure high quality app experiences for your users, and keep your users engaged. Firebase's fully managed infrastructure products help you speed up and simplify development. But adding new features can still be time consuming and tie up engineering resources. Designed to increase productivity, Firebase extensions are pre-packaged solutions that let you quickly add more functionality to your mobile and web apps, like translating text with the Google Cloud Translation API or exporting Firestore collections to BigQuery. And now, we're expanding and releasing new extensions with companies you know and trust so you can do even more, like quickly integrate payments processing with Stripe search Firestore with Algolia, send email with MailChimp, and communicate with your users via MessageBird, all without having to write any code or learn new APIs on your own. So let's say you're an e-commerce app and you want to keep customers informed about the status of their orders. You can use the new MessageBird extension to send triggered messages to your users. It's easy to set up with just a few clicks in the Firebase console. And once it's installed, you can add or update documents in Firestore, and the MessageBird extension will automatically send messages to your customers on channels like messaging apps or SMS. This implementation that That's normally brutal. would have taken days can now be done in hours with Firebase extensions. 
Check out extensions now to see how they can help you expand your app's functionality without a lot of additional work. Once your app is live, users expect it to be fast and responsive. Performance monitoring presents mobile and web app performance data so you know exactly how users are experiencing your app from their point of view. We're pleased to share our latest updates to performance monitoring. Now you can track and improve your performance metrics in real time. This lets you monitor the rollout of a new app release within minutes. And Это, кстати, крутая тема. Надо будет привязать к CodeLab и посмотреть, как она сработает. And identify issues before they become major problems. But that's not all. We redesign the performance monitoring dashboard to help you better identify your most crucial performance issues. The new comprehensive trace table lets you compare trends across your metrics and zero in on the biggest changes that need your immediate attention, like a network call that's been running slower than before. This is in addition to the customizable metrics you can select to appear right at the top of the dashboard. So if you want to keep an eye out on the performance of a new API call you've just added, or make sure a network request isn't too slow, you can track that front and center right in the dashboard. Get started with performance monitoring today to ensure your users experience the best version of your app. Another challenge you can turn to Firebase to help you solve is user engagement. And that's where Firebase Remote Config comes in. Remote Config lets you update the behavior and appearance of your app for different audience segments without releasing a new version. This lets you run A-B tests, roll out new features, or push custom experiences to groups of users, all from the Firebase console. Now, while A-B tests are a great tool, it can take some time and expertise to set up, run, analyze, and roll out the results. And that's why we're launching a new feature called personalization, which uses the power of Google's machine learning to automatically deliver the best experience to each of your users individually. Setup is simple, and personalization starts to, del de to deliver optimized experiences within hours. Best of all, you don't need to manually analyze the results and pick a single winning experience to roll out. So let's say you're a game developer, and you want to balance the difficulty of your game to keep users engaged. With personalization, you can set up different options, and then ask Firebase to figure out the rest for you. Personalization automatically learns which types of users respond best to which difficulty settings. It then assigns each user the right sets of value to maximize their enjoyment, whether they are a more casual player or perform more of a challenge. To get ready for personalization, install the Remote Config SDK today. And if you want to test out personalization right now, just join our alpha program where you can get early access to it. With every improvement to Firebase, we aim to take away the hard work for you so you can focus on delivering the amazing experiences that people rely on every day. Now, I'll pass it over to Kamal to share more updates on machine learning. Okay. I like to meet other people in the community who are in the same circles I'm in, and we're focused on the same oh, things. We've seen in many ways, AI is making our products more helpful in people's daily lives. These inspiring stories are made possible by developers just like you, applying machine learning to solve the problems they're passionate about. But machine learning is evolving at an incredible pace. We new algorithms, hardware, data sets, new use cases. We don't expect you to be an ML expert. Instead, we build our platform so you don't have to be. So today I'm going to show you how, with no ML expertise required, you can build these experiences on the platforms that you care about, whether it's on mobile, the web, or in the cloud. Say you're a mobile developer and you have an idea for a new app that reacts to different sounds in your environment, like traffic or bird songs or music. How would you build this app? The first step is to look for existing models. On TensorFlow Hub, you can find hundreds of pre-trained models for video, image, text, speech, and audio. 
Here, you will need an audio model, and this one by Google can recognize a variety of different sounds. The next step is to build this model into your app. To make it easy to integrate a model into your Android app, we've provided the TensorFlow Lite task library, which gives you simple APIs and data structures that work in the language you use. This allows you to go from all this code to this. Finally, okay. to recognize your own sounds, you will need to customize your model. Building your own model can be time consuming. It requires taking several steps, like uh, loading your own data, labeling it, defining features, and more. TensorFlow Lite Model Maker automates these steps for popular use cases, allowing you to take a state-of-the-art model and customize it using your own data set with only a few lines of code. As you can see, in just three simple steps and no ML experience, you can build an app that recognizes any specific sound around you. And that's just one example. You can go wherever inspiration takes you. The web is another area where we're making it easier to build AI applications. JavaScript is one of the world's most popular languages with millions of developers. TensorFlow.js, our JavaScript library, lets you build AI experiences in your website without having to install a single SDK. It runs directly in the browser, and all you need to do is reference it in your code, include the model as a JSON file, and you're good to go. Let's take a look at an example. Imagine you want to detect spam in user comments. Bots can generate a lot of spam. By capturing it directly in the browser, you can save on server costs and improve user experience. A use case like this requires a text model that's been trained with existing comments. Luckily, TensorFlow Hub also offers a text model you can start with. And you can test this one directly in your browser before even including it in your web app. Now, not all common spam is the same, and you might have specific examples for your community. To customize your model, you can use TensorFlow Lite Model Maker again. And since you're on the web, let's use Colab, Google's, Google's hosted notebook service, which allows anybody to run Python code through the browser. Colab gives you free access to TPUs and GPUs so we can customize the spam detection model much faster. ML in the browser opens up many new exciting use cases for millions of web developers. For example, you can now use the entire collection of TensorFlow Lite models with TensorFlow.js so they can directly be used on the web, no conversion required. And the new web Bluetooth API is compatible with TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers so you can deploy models to a tiny board directly from your browser without installing software. As you can see, whether you're a mobile or web developer, you don't have to be an ML expert to start building these experiences. To help you get started, we've created a new on-device machine learning site with learning pathways and turnkey solutions where you can learn how to build common apps like the mobile and web examples I just shared. These tools are available open source and complement our set of cloud AI products, which support every type of ML developers. But we know that it can be frustrating to juggle with the various tools, frameworks, and platforms. This can make it difficult to manage your models efficiently. To solve this, we have an exciting announcement. I'd like to introduce Vertex AI, a new managed machine learning platform that is built off of our experience in creating machine learning tools. It incorporates new features that let you experiment and deploy faster while simplifying model management. Let's revisit our common spam example using data from BigQuery. First, with Vertex AI, we don't need to build a model ourselves. AutoML can take care of that for us. No code is required. Just press the train button, and AutoML will search state-of-the-art models, customize them to build just the right one for you completely automatically. Of course, you can also bring your own ML code written in popular frameworks like TensorFlow and use Vertex AI to train faster at scale. Next, Vertex makes it easy to understand and test our model. Here, we can see a solid accuracy improvement. And we can use feature importance to tell us which inputs our model relies on most to make its predictions, giving you more transparency. Here, the common text is the biggest indicator of whether our model marked it as spam. 
We can also easily test the model in the console. For this example, our model is 99.8% confident that this model is spam. So we have a great model, but we're not done. In reality, we will need to keep iterating on this model. We need to make sure new comments are classified correctly. And if spammers adapt, we should update our model by retraining it on new data, evaluate it, and redeploy it. This can be a lot of work. To automate this process, Vertex AI includes Vertex Pipelines, a new feature that helps you manage your models in production by letting you define and launch pipelines using Kubeflow or TensorFlow Extended. This is what our spam detection Мы example looks пока. like. With the output generated from each step, you can track the artifacts across the whole process. This makes it really easy to have Vertex AI automatically retrain your model on new spam data and redeploy it only if your quality targets are met. And we've already seen some great use cases from our beta partners. For example, Portal de Medicina, a Brazilian healthcare startup, used Vertex AI and its model validation features to scan thousands of ECGs for heart problems across Brazil and Africa, helping doctors better detect and triage high-risk patients. We can't wait to see what you build with Vertex AI. Check out our resources or get started by going to your Google Cloud console. Many of you have made REI tools what they are today. And on behalf of the ML teams at Google, thank you. What inspires me the most is seeing what you do with these new tools in your hands. Whether it's on your phone or your browser or on tiny devices, we are amazed by the things you build. Things that we could have never imagined. Things like what we saw in the video of Jason Barnes and his prosthetic arm, which gave him back his ability to drum. That is truly amazing. Now I'd like to turn it back over to Jason. You can build and build and build. There's always endless possibilities. The things you can do with machine learning are truly incredible. Some of the most exciting examples I've seen recently have been through the work we're doing with startups around tackling climate change. Over the past two years, we've supported dozens of sustainability-focused startups in Japan and Europe, and we recently launched our first accelerator in North America. We're helping 11 startups use machine learning to tackle big challenges, from creating carbon-negative concrete to making everything from office buildings to pet food more sustainable. These are companies like Yardstick, who saw there was a huge opportunity to store CO2 from the atmosphere into the soil and decided to build the tools that were needed to measure it. They're using Google Maps, TensorFlow, and our compute platforms to allow instant carbon level testing. This can enable large-scale adoption of sustainable agricultural practices that will capture more carbon in the ground. Examples like this show how developers coming together can be such a powerful force. And that's what makes moments like I.O. so special. While you're here, we encourage you to visit the Community Lounge to find and join the community group that's right for you. Now, we've covered a lot of ground today, but there's more our team wants to share with you. One of the benefits of a virtual I.O. is that you can check out any session you want. No waiting in line or having to pick and choose what fits in your schedule. All content will be available on demand, so I encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone and explore something new. For developers interested in emerging platforms, we have updates from AR Core about new APIs and information on the new industry-wide Matter initiative for the smart home. We also have updates from the ads team, Google Pay, and others, as well as sessions and code labs to get you started on everything you've heard about today. And we've created, created IO Adventure, which is an interactive environment where you can visit product domes, play with interactive demos, and chat with attendees. You can also hear directly from the experts with 26 live Ask Me Anything sessions with Googlers you know and love. We're here to support you as you build your next amazing products. This year has shown us so much, how interconnected we are, how resilient we are, and how powerful we are when we all work together. I hope we can take what we've learned and build the world we need for the future. So enjoy I.O. Connect with each other, learn new things, invest in yourself and in the community. 
I can't wait to see what you build and I look forward to seeing you all in person soon. Thank you. Кирилл, у тебя микрофон выключен? А, что, да, я это, походу, да. А, что там, все закончилось, что ли? Да, значит, все, ну, а ты слышал все, что он говорил, да? Да. Он типа сказал, все, всем спасибо, вот все замечательные вещи, которые вы можете заняться. Я хотел посмотреть быстро перед тем, как мы закончим, адвенчер этот, где он? Вот это, да? WebGLN supported на браузер. О, а что у тебя браузер, Дэн? Так, продолжаем. Лиз, тебя что-то вдохновило в киноте? А, честно? <laughs> да. Ну, мне нравится презентация Apple. Ну, то есть, смотри, вот когда Apple говорят то, что все, ребята, у нас презентации, я ставлю себе пометку в календаре, и я вот эти вот там час-два, я, короче, вот чисто вот смотрю. Мне вот прям по кайфу. А что, что, что не хватило здесь? Не знаю, честно. Просто не вдохновило? Ну, типа, блин, э, хорошо, показали ассистента, который говорит гораздо лучше, да, но как бы это каждый год показывают, и он все лучше и лучше. Ну, как бы здорово то, что он развивается, конечно, да, но мне кажется, очень много времени было уделено немножко не тем вещам, которые вот, наверное, все-таки интересны. Ага, ты, короче, ты считаешь, что революция не произошла, да? Пока нет. Ага. Ну, в принципе... В принципе, я согласен, что не разорвало, да? Ну, то есть, смотри, вот, допустим, вот как делает Apple, да? Э, пока презентация не прошла, мы не знаем, mm -hmm. что нас ждет вообще. Mm -hmm. А здесь, по сути, нам показали все то, с чем мы сталкиваемся каждый день. Mm -hmm. И, ну, мы, по сути, вот про это уже знаем, то есть мы это уже используем, там, может быть, год, может быть, два. Mm -hmm. И вот не хватает... Чего-то такого, типа, вау. Угу. Вот, вот то, что ты сейчас открыл, мне на это смотреть гораздо более интересно, если честно. Так, ну что, я регистрируюсь. Да? А, так, а подожди, давай просто... Как мне другой профиль открыть? Так, а я могу походить там, да, тоже? Ну, наверное, да. Давай встретимся. Так. Ну, так, я согласился. А, сразу это... Реактив Фокс. Так, где лисичка? Почему лисичку? Так, лиса. Да. А -а -а. Нельзя эмоджи. А, нельзя эмоджи? <laughs> да. Так, ну ладно, давай без эмоджи. А, здесь нужно выбирать все. Да. Так, секунду, мне нужно залогиниться. Ага, так, и теперь я могу открыть ту же самую линку, наверное, да, но здесь. Ой, здесь прям очень много настроек. Адвенчер. Ну, да, можно не, не заморачиваться особо. Или ты хочешь и... лисичку? А, здесь эти иконки всякие, их нужно собирать. О, а, а это я, наверное, попробую походить, пособирать. Я люблю такие штуки. Ну, давай, так. Ну, вообще, да, я бы хотел лисичку. Ну что, давай мы где-то встретимся. Так, сейчас я выберу себе красный цвет. Так, а что происходит? Почему я хотел же в другом... В другом браузере это дело открыть. Я здесь хотел, да? А, ничего себе, интересно, можно ли использовать этот код, чтобы поменять локацию?
А, кстати, мой профайл, который этот... Раньше я не помню, где он был. Что-то... То ли Devs, Google.com, то ли что-то вроде того. Короче, меня перенесли, мой профайл в девелоперов Google. Угу. Мне недавно письмо пришло. Так. Вот, и он типа публичный. Угу. Да, я тоже, я тоже недавно где-то регистрировался. Так, ну что? Так, ну у меня скачиваются ассоциации. Так, я появился Давай, где-то на каком-то перекрестке. Так. А я где? А, вот я, я себя нашел. Так, давай, как мне двигаться-то? Наверное, в... А, вот. Не, не ВСД. А, да, ВСД. Ничего себе, он мне перестает... Э, непонятно. Не ходит, короче. Надо так, а ты на каком раз. сервере, кстати? На нулевом, да? А да. что все написано там? North West. А у меня да. центр. Так, ну что, я не могу уходить, короче. А кликни на себя. Так, я, смотри, я кликаю на себя, делаю один шаг, и он, и он теряет фокус. А, теряет фокус? Да. Ты на ASD ходишь, да? Я и стрелками пробовал, и так, и так. А, слушай, у меня тоже походу. Да? А, нет. Hello. Он, правда, лагает. Hello world. А может я могу? Вот тут музыка какая-то. Короче, если я буду кликать мышкой где угодно, то тогда она работает. А, да, ну что? Минус, север... короче, в чем то, что? Северо-запад. Я иду в центр тогда, да? Я прям в центре. Давай, я иду в центр к тебе. Прям около этого, около зала. Ну и лаги там. Так. Ага, вот теперь я на севере. И теперь мне нужно добраться до... До центра, да? Ищем лиса. Ты тоже на нулевом сервере, Лис? Да. Прекрасно. Так. А, он не, не дает мне ходить по... Он мне вообще никуда не дает ходить теперь, да? Все, все зависли. Давай перезагрузимся. Да, короче, штука крутая, но много багов. Я так uh -huh. Надеюсь, что это деплоит фикс для Дэна. А Дэн у тебя вообще не работает или... Так. Хотите узнать, как общаться вживую? Проверьте за шедл в меню. Это где? Так, все, я в центре. А где ты в центре, Лис? А, О, там, где нормально. этот подиум. Так, что за подиум? Там в самом-самом центре. И тут... А, вот там, где... Так, я куда-то сел. Так, тут какая-то музыка. Где эти... Стулья, да? Угу. А где именно ты? В первом ряду. Лис. А, вот он ты. Так, а как тебя... Так, я, я на тебя кликнул. Так, а ты кто? А... Давай иди сюда. Лис, тот, лис. Так, давай-ка, наверное, встану. Давай влево отойдем. Иди сюда. А, это ты? Кымчерис? Р 
Короче, так как оно... Так, где я дойду от звука? Куда лист оделся? Ты где? Я налево ушел на пешеходный переход. А зачем ты ушел налево? А, потому что там оно лагает. Так, давай я иду к тебе, ты налево. Вот я перешел пешеходный переход и здесь стою. Так, слева, да? Да. Так, и где ты? А вот ты ниже. Я прям на пешеходном переходе. Я не вижу тебя. Г -где? Вот прям самый-самый первый пешеходный переход от этого. Давай ты ко мне придешь, я не, не знаю где-то, я не понимаю куда. И вот я, наверное, на пешеходном переходе. А ну вот теперь я тебя вижу. Так. А, вот, Reactive Fox. Так, хорошо. А, а как тут... Э... Куда мы пойдем? Так, а как в друзья тут добавиться? А можно? Сейчас я тебе... Не знаю. Я тебе Блин, оно капец замьютить. тормозит. Так. Могу забанить тебя, прикинь. Так, Дэн, приходи к нам, мы в центре. О, можно в офлайн мод перейти. А зачем? Ага, отключал хардварную акселерацию. Ну вот тебе вот. Так, ну что, пойдем. Я нашел чашку с кофе. Так, сейчас тебе напишем. Ты лис. Как лисица. Она тоже тормозит? Да. А. <laughs> лис. Ну, то есть, лис? по идее, оно не должно тормозить, да? Должно. Должно? Ну, конечно. Это же какая-то шняга на WebGL, в которой 10 тысяч человек там сидят. Угу. Не, ну это же можно же было как-то оптимизировать все-таки. Там не обязательно весь, ну, всю карту рендерить. Можно было какой-нибудь маленький банч. Тут прыгать-то хотя бы можно? Что еще можно делать? Прыгать нельзя. Вот там внизу есть какие-то штуки. Типа Айо, солнышко. Это ты нарисовал? Сердечки. А, Кстати, а почему у тебя есть значочек Google, а у меня нету? Потому что я работаю в Google, это нет. А, я понял, если я на тебя наступаю, то появляется плюс один. А, типа больше человеков? Да. Ага. А, и тут в процессе можно переодеваться. Хоп, у меня есть карандаш. Так, а это что? Карта. Круто. А это что? А, это бэдж. Круто. Дэн, ты где? Приходи к нам тоже. Firebase когда будет? В 10 вечера, короче, вы, вы, вы уснете уже. О, у меня уже 7 бэджиков. Откуда? Так. За то, что я создал профиль. Потом за то, что я присоединился к Google I.O. 21. Открыл Android SDK Platform Tools. Был Google Developer Profile Beta User. Потом какой-то Adventure. Это вообще откуда? Это что? Это, наверное, вот за Google I.O. Google Developer Experts Member и Android Studio User. Какие лаги, да? Угу. Ой, нашел мусорку. Ой, вижу, Д -Д Денис Б. Так. Плохо то, что нельзя как-то подписываться. Да. Так, Я ну даже что? твой профиль не могу открыть. Мы можем... 
Что мы можем делать? Да ничего, если бы у нас было достаточно людей, могли бы написать какое-нибудь неприличное слово, да? Так мы как бы ничего не можем. Ну, да. Что это? Что все, заканчиваем. Мин 5 хватит, наверное. Да. Так. Я, наверное, пойду. Да, надо уже закругляться. Да, потому что там мы хотели покушать пельмешков и попить пивка. Неплохо. С бедным одиноким раком. Нет, рака нам не продали. А, не продали. Да, его пытались весить, но его не продали. Потому что там... Что там, чек не пробивался, да? На рака. На рака чек не пробивался, да? Он, короче, весил 26 грамм. Это был последний рак, который у них был. И он не пробивался, потому что весил 26 грамм. Одинокий рак дистрофан, короче, да? Ага. Так. Так, ну хорошо. Ладненько, все, да, я тоже пойду. А... Тут все над рекрутерами. А как мне удочку-то... А, вот, тут можно удить, да? Какие лаги. Так, ну и что, я а, удю? Вы не можете рыбачить без фишинг рот. А мне дал, видишь, там чувак синий с, э, слева стоит с двумя удочками. А. -а, -а. Так, я, я выиграл, короче. Привет, Диман. Короче, мы наконец-то используем... Э, Твич по назначению, да? Так, а как ты у него что-то получил? Я просто нажимаю на зеленую штучку. И а, и все, да? да? Ладно. Не, мне говорят то, что нужен какой-то фишинг рут взять. А, может быть, вот руки он. надо надеть. Вот, смотри, где я. А, может так, быть. сейчас. Вот, смотри, а, видишь меня? Да. Вот где вот этот синий чув чувак, вот он тебе дает фишингрот. Удочку. Так, наверное, ее надеть надо, да? Да, наверное, я не знаю. Так, ладно, я. Потопал. Да, я пойду. Я нашел терминал где-то. Так, я себе, наверное, сохраню эту штуку. Угу. И завтра попробую потыкать, когда людей будет поменьше. Хорошо. Ну, так. Сейчас, конечно, жесть. Да. Ладненько, все. Да. Всем спасибо, кто дожил до этого момента. И да, включаю все. Всем пока-пока.